Welcome once again, everybody. It is Thursday. It is 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p. Or, yeah, 3 p.m. Pacific, and you are joining us for another edition of Engadget Welcome. Play Day. Oh my gosh! I messed everything up. Hold on, everyone. Hold on. What is happening? Sean, you audibly typoed. I did. I. It was not me. It was. It was the. It was you. Talking back over yourself because sometimes Twitch likes to talk at itself. Sorry about that. This is a gadget play date. We're here to not screw things up and learn things about a school education. Welcome everybody. I'm associate editor Timothy Seppla. And I'm joined, as always, by Associate Editor Sean Buckley. And we're gonna be playing No Pineapple Left Behind, which is a sort of management simulator with an education focus and a a not too subtle political message about school and the No Child Left Behind Act. And the importance and of eating delicious fruit. That too. Uh, do you know what the best way to eat pineapple is, Sean? Uh, in a yogurt dual whip at Disneyland. Oh, I knew you were going to go for Disney. So my, my, my way to... Uh, to tie this back to Disney, oh my my way to eat pineapple ties back to Disney as well. Rather, I should say, I won a trip to Disney World oh. shortly after I graduated high school, and we stayed. We it was like staying on the resort or at one of the resorts and everything. So we stayed at the the Hawaiian themed resort. It was really nice, and the dinner we had was actually luau style. Oh, I know so exactly kind of where you ate. Oh, yeah. So they just kept bringing food out to us over and over and over again. It was great. But the, the dessert that they did was grilled pineapple with, with caramel. You dip the pineapple in the caramel, and what the caramel does is it cuts the acid from the pineapple. So you ate at the Polynesian. That place is amazing. Yeah, it was insane. But, yes, so the food was really good, but that's my favorite way to eat pineapple now. I, I don't like eating pineapple any other way. I'll eat pineapple in pretty much every single way, but the pineapples we're talking about right now are really children. Yes, they are. So we're going to read this. The plot of this game is really simple and something that happens in every school across America. An evil wizard came to this school and turned all the students into pineapples. That's the plot. That's all you need to know. No, actually, it's, 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 it's kind of symbolic. So the pineapples are basically children's who have been children's. <laughs> I, like, I like how you took a detour to South Park. <laughs> children who have been reduced into simple stats. As the game explains in the first couple of seconds, pineapples are simple, but they can turn into children who are not simple. Simple pineapples just want better grades, but children have their own ambitions. They want to learn things. They want to have friendships. Pineapples don't want that. To have a successful school, you want a lot of pineapples. Okay, I, sure. And so that's that's how this game starts out. It's uh, as you can see, it's an over the top game. It's a little of a managing sim simulator, and I'm really bad at these games. So we're gonna see what we're gonna need to do. We need to start by buying uh, some professors here or teachers. So we're gonna spend a whole bunch of money to uh, to get some teachers, and then try and earn money, which is the, the goal of this game. And sorry, you were talking about the about eating pineapples, Tim. Go ahead. That sounds wonderful. Well, it's one of those things. It, it's better than any souvenir I could have ever brought home from like Disney. The memory of eating this pineapple? Yeah, because it's something I, anytime I want, I can just go to the store and buy pineapple. That's right. And it's, then dip it in caramel. That's right. It's not so much the uh, the memory for you. It's just knowing that it cuts it. So you said it cuts the acidity for you? Mm-hmm. I've never had. Yeah. I, I guess that makes sense because I, I love eating pineapples, but I'll get, like, get a can, which is the worst way to eat pineapples, by the way. Is, yeah, is canned pineapple rings, but it's also the cheapest and easiest. Um, and I'll eat it, and then I'll feel kind of sick afterwards, even though I love pineapple. So I, I can only eat like a little bit of pineapple because it gives me a stomachache. It's probably the acid. It's probably I bet the acid. I bet that's exactly what it is. I've never thought of it that way. So right now we're all uh, we're in tutorial mode. I keep cutting off this pineapple conversation because I want to explain this game to people. Are uh, you that hungry, Sean? Are you are you that not hungry, Sean? I mean, well, I always, well, I mean, I always want to eat, but you didn't. I don't. I don't like playing games and eating because, you know, then it like it gets my keyboard gross. Oh, I did that. I remember the last time I did that, and remember doing that was, I was, it was when I was a kid, and it was on Thanksgiving. And I had rented X Men for the Sega Genesis, Ooh. and I my favorite type of non fruit pie is pecan, 
and I was eating it with my bare hands because I was a monster and I was eight years old. But I remember smearing the, the, the pecan pie filling into my Sega Genesis controller, and it was a nightmare. Oh, that sounds that sounds really awful. Yeah, it was kind of the worst. I've never had anything liquid go into my controllers, but like, I, I didn't think I noticed it when I was a kid. It didn't bother me to have greasy controllers. I would eat chips and play games, you know? Oh, yeah. Now it's just the worst. I can't handle when my keyboard gets greasy. Right. I just... I, on my on my work computer, I hate it. I hate the feeling of my fingers sliding off my keys. It's right. disgusting. And like I, I wash my hands like like meticulously before and after I use electronics now. And like I go to I fix my mom's computer and she doesn't. So there's like crumbs on them and stuff. And I'm like, what? This is disgusting. And I I don't like touching it. You know. Oh, my parents were the same way. My parents' monitors have at least like a sixteenth of an inch thick of sneeze and spittle on on their computers and it's just the worst i i can't do it so i i feel like we do have to explain this game a little bit more um uh, let's talk about food what, what no i mean like because if people are going to be watching this they got to understand the basics of what we're doing True. here you True. know so, we do we do need to actually yes so as an example here we have is a pineapple right now i've selected pineapple number fifty four thousand two hundred forty eight. And that's a that's, very specific number. That's the well, that's the pineapple's name. You know, next to him is thirty three thousand two hundred thirty three. I don't know where the twenty or thirty thousand in between them went, but um, see, pineapples as you can see is the pop up have grades and humanity, and we don't want to keep them human. We want to keep them pineapples. So that so is the more human they become, that's worse for us. Because if they get a hundred percent humanity, they turn into a little boy or girl. That's not what we want. In contrast, right. here we have uh, oh, I'm gonna choose a different kid. I don't know how to pronounce that. Britannia Oren. And, uh, and her ambitions, she, she has lots of social traits. She's a rich girl, and she's straight. And uh, and her goals in life are to have a crush with someone else and be friends with this person and to stop being friends with another kid. Like, they have these goals, and if you look at them, oh. every one of their goals uh, is a modifier to, to them getting good grades. She gets, five like, minus five grade points because she wants to be friends with someone. So we want to make her not have friends. We want to just ruin her oh. life and make her miserable. And that's our goal as a as a public school teacher. Sean, how what was your grade school experience like? Was it okay? Uh, I got. Did you get teased or picked on? I I, I perceived myself as getting pe teased or picked on a lot as a kid, but as I got older, I started to wonder, like, if I was actually getting teased or picked on, or, or if you were the one doing the teasing and picking on. No, or if I was just paranoid, you know. Oh. You know, was like that really a thing? Or was um, was it really just me like perceiving people picking on me when they weren't? I think they really were picking on me, but I got over it in high school to the extent that I stopped caring. Mm -hmm. Like I remember, I remember a specific moment, like you know, freshman year of high school, where kids are still basically kids. Where it's the worst. Right, like they're still kids, but they're like <laughs> they're meaner. I remember some kid trying to tease me in a way that just seemed below us. And I was like, yeah, okay. And that was like my whole response. And he was like, what? And I'm like, yeah, whatever you say is probably true. And he was just like, oh. He was dumbfounded, wasn't he? He, he was like, all right, see you later then. I'm like, see ya. <laughs> it, was a, it was like in front of a 7-Eleven. And I never really had a problem after that. <laughs> you know, like I just, I didn't react. And then it, it didn't become an issue anymore. In elementary school, it wasn't like that. I was... I was very sensitive. I, I, I don't remember if this is actually true, but I remember telling my mother it was true that I would tell, uh -oh. I would tell a joke and people would look at me like I was a jerk, and then I would hear the same joke on the playground later, and and people would like it, you know. Uh, and it probably so you were a joke thief. I no 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 no. They, someone stole my joke and other people would laugh oh. at it. And so what it probably was, and and I thought people were being mean to me, but looking back on life, I was probably just really bad at telling jokes. You still are not great at telling jokes, um, if we're being honest. I'm not good at most things. Tim has the uh, the unfortunate um, happenstance in life of being my friend on on uh, on Google. So when I when I think of a joke that's really bad and I draw it and it's so bad I don't want to put it on Twitter, he has to see it, and I've sent him some really bad ones. Yep. Well, so my my elementary school experience. I switched schools a few times. Oh. For different reasons. I tried to do uh, that, and I wasn't allowed to. Oh, I got teased a bunch in, in school. Like, elementary school, it was really bad. Because the kids always had better stuff in their lunches than I did. And the two popular boys that I was on the periphery of being friends with, they were really into sports. They would watch Sports Center before they went to school when they were, like, 9 and 10. I was like, you guys are, what the hell? Seriously? Oh, yeah. I, there were a lot of kids that were really into sports, and I never was, so I didn't. I didn't get it. Like, I thought the Fighting Irish was just a cool t-shirt for, like, a decade. 
<laughs> I didn't get that. I was like, yeah, was, ever, everyone was, likes this leprechaun was, that wants to punch people in the face. Like, dude, no, it's it's a football team. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> I don't care anymore. Uh, yeah, so I had to deal with that, and they would always they'd be like, all right, trivia time for Pringles. And I was like, oh, well, I'm never going to get any of these Pringles. But so whenever the lunch ladies would go around with extra food or somebody had something better than their lunch than I did, it'd be like, oh, I'll take that. And I developed the nickname Timmy Tummy, and it was the worst thing in the world. <laughs> That's a pretty bad nickname. Cause you oh, know, it's still bad. Well, you know, it was free food. Yeah, I mean, it was free food. It was better than, you know, the Lay's that I had or, or something. I didn't get Triscuits. I didn't get Pringles. I didn't get anything fancy in my lunches. The, um, the worst uh, school experience I ever had was a teacher's fault. Mm. And um, and it was a summer school teacher, so not a, I mean not to say not a real teacher, but you know not a real teacher, a teacher that was doing summer school, and she obviously didn't want to be there. But I remember we were doing one of those supposed icebreaker games, you know, where you're supposed to introduce yourself in some way, and I don't remember what the game was, but if it was like you had to do whatever the person before you like said, right? Mm -hmm. Like so it was like an instruction following uh, Simon says kind of thing. And right. I don't remember the situation, but it came to the thing where there were Oreos, and they said, okay, your, your thing that you need to do, the other kid said, is you need to take this Oreo apart and rub the white stuff from the Oreo all over your face. And I was like... What? Right. And I was like, teacher, I don't want to make my face dirty. That's stupid and gross. Right? And we had an argument about it. I said, I'm not doing it, and I'm not doing it. And eventually she said, you're going to get expelled and kicked out of summer school if you don't do it. And so I... What? Had, yeah, you know? And so I, it, it was... I was... I'm still upset about this. It was like the biggest public shaming thing I ever had to do. I think it had a huge negative effect on my personality, to be honest, years later. Thinking oh. back. Like, I had to uh, humiliate myself instead of class by making my face nasty for no reason. I, I'm still upset about it. <laughs> this is absurd. This I can't believe the teacher did not get fired. Well, I didn't report it. I just said I didn't like I think I told my mom, and my mom said, you know, well, you know, my mom was like, you do what you got to do. <laughs> Man, your mom was... It, oh wow, there are things I'm not going to just say on this. I don't remember what my mom said. All I know is that I wasn't satisfied and she wasn't satisfied, and that it didn't it didn't get elevated to a level it should have been, you know? Because like it was seen the school I guess saw it is like I wasn't following instructions. It was a disciplinary issue. Oh man. Yeah, I was. So that was my worst experience looking back in school on a social aspect. I was teased because I was a dork. And, Really awkward, nerdy, and probably super annoying looking back at who I was. But, you know, that's that's as bad as it got. Sounds uh, like a garbage pail kid, Yaddle says. <laughs> yeah, kind of like yeah. kind of like a garbage pail card kid is nasty. Oh, wow. I just, I can't believe that that was a thing that happened. Oh, uh, wow. Um, so, you're playing this video game. And... I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to wrap my head around this. Like, how does this work as a game, Sean? Well, it's weird. Right now, I'm doing really bad. As you can see, my students are getting Fs. Is uh, that because you're busy talking to me? Uh, no. Well, it, it partially because I'm talking to you, and partially because I'm not very good at it. So, each of these teachers uh, need to they need to have skills, right? And uh, I don't even know if you have skills, but look. So if you look in the upper left-hand corner of our stream here, you have Memorizer and Cheating Bolt. One of these is something called a spell, and one of them is called a... Let's pause it, actually. Uh, one of them is called a laser. And so the spell affects, um, like, how well they teach and how much energy it takes up, this little lightning bolt. And the less and lower energy they have, the lower less likely it is that they are going to um, be able to teach kids something. So they teach with spells... And the lasers let them affect the children. So, like, a negatory laser would end a child's quest, right? So, let's see. We have the negatory laser, and we have this child here who wants to get an A in math. I actually want that quest to exist. Um, this one... Uh, what are their quests? Oh, well, they all want to get A. This one wants to ath out Cathody Stamp... Cathody? What kind of name? Cath Cathody! What? Cathody Sampled, right? That's, that's, okay. that's this kid's goal, right? And, uh... It's, uh, what's his name? Lawbury. Lawbury Twade. I can't say any of these names. So what we? Wow. I think they're. I. I'm. We can ask the developer Seth when he comes on with us uh, later in the stream. We can ask him if these names were intentionally made to be impossible to say. 
a lot. Right. So I'm trying to use the. Ne- I'm not very good at. it. I'm trying to use the negatory laser on uh, the kids. Lost. I lost them. Laundry. You're supposed to click on one and then right click on him. Maybe he has to be in the same room. But if you were to use the laser on him, that goal would go away. And then he would get better grades because he would have one less distraction. Right. And I'm going to guess that there's kind of a push-pull between keep maintaining humanity and then keeping the keeping them good in school, correct? Well, I'm not sure. As near as I can tell, since the goal is to make money, I'm supposed to try and make $5,000 by the end of the month, and I think I'm at 2400 My school must earn $5,000. That's my objective. I think it's best to minimize humanity. Like, there's nothing advantageous that I can see about keeping... And maybe Seth will clear this up later, but, like, like keeping their humanity... Like, their social traits as, as humans all have, you know, negatives, right? And so if... Mm-hmm. If this person gets their A in math, they lose 15 humanity, which gives them, uh, you know, this gets them closer to being a pineapple, and the pineapples only care about good grades, you know? Oh, wow. So, man, there's a lot of, there is some heavy stuff going on it's with this super, game. It's super weird. It's it's it, it's taken me a little bit of time of playing it to try and get my head around it, because um, it, it helps a little bit if you know Seth's story, which we'll be able to talk about a little bit more later. Yeah, and then, yeah, and, and, and that will help us kind of understand like why pineapples are significant and why, like, w- you know what that may- means on multiple levels. Right, right. Yeah, I interviewed Seth earlier this year for a piece that I'm going to drop a link to right now. I interviewed him for a piece about the the game, and because I thought this was a really really interesting idea, he it turns out he was a teacher at a Boston charter school for about six months and his he was a special ed teacher and his special ed students were expected to meet the same performance standards of other students which blows me away and it's something that just it it shouldn't be in place but it is and yeah when when stuff comes on later in the stream we will definitely be talking about this at length it's just, it's crazy to see that this is something that happens and that these types of things, you know, it, it's cool to see one person be able to basically, basically one person be able to develop a game on their personal experiences like this. Right, and so it's... And it's, have this kind of a strong message. It's sort of personal to that, and I think it resonates probably more with people that are involved in the school system, right? Because uh, if you know any teachers who are, f- like, friends of yours, you know, it's very... They have, like, weird complaints dealing with the union or the school board. And you said he was at a charter school, I believe. And I have friends who have been at a charter schools. And, and they, again, they have, like, weird issues working with the charter oh, yeah. school people, you know, because the, the charter schools are meeting different goals than uh, than a typical uh, classroom might. Right. And the thing with charter schools, based on the research I've done and based on what Seth told me, is charter schools are – the teachers are not – do not belong to a union. So if these students do not – meet the goals or the the performance goals of that have been set in place they can just be fired whereas Which, at a public school they would that wouldn't be able to happen because they would be in a union contract and, and they would have protection would protect and tenures yes. and stuff now the thing about that is that's part of this here since i'm assuming the game here is a charter school if my teachers are doing badly i can just fire them outright right next here shows their salary how much it costs for them a day yeah versus not so let's say mr dis isn't doing very well in math and he's He's doing fine, but let's fire him anyway. You can just, boom, kick him out. He's too expensive. Oh, to teach wow. And I just I just fired this Sean, guy. What? cold-blooded. Right. Cold-blooded. Halfway through the school day, I fired this guy. So I need to hire someone else right away. And I'm going to hire someone that costs a little bit less. And increase my profit margins as a school. Except for I just lost all the leveling up I'd, with him. So that's sort of rough. And let's see. And rumor has it here is we're actually playing, uh, the developer said it's a quick thing, we're playing the wrong version of the game. So as I play this round, uh, we're downloading an update, and we might switch uh, dutiful watchers. Yes. But since we're streaming via OBS, it's not like we're going to lose you if we switch over the stream. Right, it'll only take a second or so. So it won't be a problem. Uh, One second. Now, Sean, did you just, did you like being... uh, did you like being a student at elementary school? Because I know for, for most of my time at elementary, it wasn't really until 
I hit high school that actually felt comfortable. But elementary school was always really hard for me because I was going to school out of my kind of native district. Oh. I switched schools a few times. I went from my first school. I switched mm-hmm. out because I I didn't like the, the kids, and I was always getting picked on, and my parents pulled me out of that school. I went to a school in my own district for a year. I made some pretty good neighborhood friends. And then I went to a environmental school what at the mean? zoo. Yeah, it's called in Grand Rapids. It's called John Ball Zoo School, and it's there. It's in the administration building of the zoo, and it's a two-room school. No, and there's really a big school. focus. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, it was, I think it was fifty kids. Period. Oh no, a hundred kids. Period. Sixty something like it was between sixty and hundred kids. It was very small, and. We would, there was a big emphasis on environmental, so one of the projects we had was to do a, a leaf uh, collection. So mm-hmm. we would go into the woods near the zoo, and we would go through, and we collected a bunch of leaves, pressed them, and put them in a book, and identified them. And things of that nature, we went to camp a few times, we learned kind of camping skills, things like that. It was pretty cool. That sounds it was, pretty it, awesome, yeah. Yeah, it was an advanced school, though, so it was, there was a heavy focus on projects, and long-term projects and in sixth grade we were being taught algebra which at that time in 1996 that wasn't the standard thing i think we did algebra in seventh yeah so it was advanced and some of the things i just i i couldn't do and i wasn't very great i was at if i'm going to be honest here i was at the very bottom of the acceptance standards and i just wasn't a good student yeah i wasn't because i procrastinated a lot it wasn't until, like I said, high school where I actually I felt comfortable and I felt okay. And it wasn't my freshman year in high school, because freshman year, I think, is going to be terrible for basically anybody across the board. Oh, mine I was just, easy, I... but, I mean, I was... Actually, I don't remember it, because I did freshman year at one school, and then I moved over to a different school the next year, because uh, they opened a new school. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was closer to my house! Yeah, yeah. Seth... He's speaking about when we fired the teacher in chat, subaltered games. He says, oh, if anything, this is a much nicer version of what really happens oh, when I'm, you fire the teacher. Oh, I'm, I'm sure. So. I'm sure it is. And like, but it was really easy to fire them. I'm, I'm sure that when they fire them, usually they, don't, they probably don't fire them halfway through the school day, like at lunchtime. And then maybe they do. But like, that's what I, that's what I did. <laughs> <laughs> Which, if you think about it, that means the like M- the the HR department of this school is like really efficient. It's like, well, we just fired Jimmy. We need someone new. Can you can you get Miss Pickle Dickle over here in like ten minutes? No, no problem. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> this basically just uh, heaven. When I spoke with Seth earlier this year, he said he deliberately placed the fire button next to the income button for a reason. Oh, we won. Oh, whoa! I'm not sure what that uh, what that pineapple's flipping over its thing. That's probably why we're running the wrong version of the thing. But our school made over its goal. And, uh, like, our fun stats is uh, our averages were C. So these students did about as well as I do. Same. Same. Yeah. And then uh, the boring stats are uh, the my GPU. Uh, 42 days until Seth's birthday. There's two ducks somewhere. I don't know where they are. And uh, it took me 251 mouse clicks to get to this point. Oh wow! Yeah. How is that other download coming? Uh, let's go check that out. So we got a minute. It's it's done. You know, it, it's it's got the same. Let's just extract right here, and we'll have that running in just a second, actually. So why don't we we instead of moving on to level two, like we probably ought to, um, right. We'll we'll let's replay it. Of, yeah, let's move on to the other level of. Uh, let's move on to the game that uh, the other version of the game we have. Um, and you know what? Another fun thing. Let's see if I can put this on the screen really quick, even though it'll look terrible. Uh, but I think it's really funny, so I would like I'd like to share it with you all. So you're gonna you're gonna put a picture of your face? Uh, yes. Um, <laughs> uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh! I broke it. Okay. Um, anyway, I, I'll just explain it to you guys. So the no pineapple ba- left behind configuration screen is is uh really awesome. Um, okay. It, in fact, we're going to just... I am going to put it up here. Oh, you my know, gosh. No, no. What I've done is wrong. What I've done is terrible and wrong. I'm sorry. Uh-oh. Uh, but if you if, if you can see now, um, we've got the configuration screen for the no game and the screen resolution, which we're going to put almost to full. But the graphics quality is A, B, C, D, and F. <laughs> and I'm just... 
I really, that's a tiny detail about this that I really, really like. <laughs> and so we're going to load up another version of Pineapple Left Behind. And we're gonna switch over to that one in just a second. Oh my goodness! This one first. Okay, sorry. Okay, it's quiet now. I'm sorry, everyone. Tim, you'll hear in a second, and you'll yell at me. Oh, I have the music. I have it muted because I have to. Oh well, we we just had a very, very loud, um, adventure. So. Oh wow. Uh, well, we're very, we're very sorry about that, and I apologize on Sean's behalf because yes. Sean basically the worst but i am basically the worst person but let's go ahead and and uh solve this problem and get the the stream back to normal folks so, okay one second well in the meantime i want to say thank you to everybody that's tuned in to chat uh all 96 of you so far thank you so much it's good to see some regulars in here it's good to see yaddle duke is not in yet so hopefully he'll be tuning in soon two super dorks thank you for joining us same with jlt3 3893 uh, thank you for all the new ones coming in. And Aragon450, hello to you, sir. Good to see you back again. And we're going to be streaming until 8 o'clock. And in about an hour, we are going to be bringing in the developer of this game, Seth Altern. So, and and yes, Yoddle, just a hint of the jank for old time's sake. It has been a while since we had some jank in the streams. That was that was self-imposed, Jink. We could have been running the old version of the game, but I like this one a lot better. I'm glad he uh, he asked us to upgrade midstream, and I'm sorry I downloaded the wrong one. But now this is a, this is a much better looking school. There are three classrooms. Oh and, wow! And a hall on one side. It, it, there's there's a middle ground. I would much rather go to this school than the one we just looked at, to be honest. <laughs> you know, it's just it's just I like the layout more. You know, it's yeah. it's still on the precipice of of doom. Like you'll notice, it's on a floating island here. So, I mean, I don't, I'm not really sure how these folks get to this school, and it seems sort of terrifying. They go out to recess, and some kid probably falls off the edge every day, but it's okay. He's not a pineapple, so he's not good for the stats anyway. <laughs> you all right there, Tim? Look, I'm, I'm, just, okay. I'm just thinking, I'm, I'm just thinking ep uh, economically. Hey, hey, uh, Sean. He says Seth that. in chat says to click on new game. Not can oh, wait, hold on. We're okay. Well, I went back and did it anyway. Okay. Um, one thing that I want to say is that this we are definitely playing an alpha version of this game. This is not the final version. And Seth will be able to tell us when the final version is available once we have him on oh. in oh. about an hour. We're back to we're back to the old school again. I'm sad. Oh, Sean. I well new game continue brought us to the advanced school. New game brought oh, us to so Right, but I bet if you went off of that old save file it'd probably screw things up. Based on my experience with alpha builds that i've played right uh, you know what i think it is is um as well is i think that that was level two. Oh. and we're not you know so we're gonna play through and get to level two again anyway though so it's fine i think you should take a different path through this and just see how many pineapples you can make in this level well that's the goal i want more pineapples you know the real problem here is i could just sit here and not hire any teachers which is what i've done so far <laughs> All right, look, we're going to maximize spending. I was hiring the most expensive teachers before. I'm going to hire the cheapest teachers before this time. Yeah, so. yeah, definitely. And if I remember correctly, their lesson plans are basically magic spells, right? Right, that's what or we're talking about before. Spells. So here we go. Her, her spell right now is the worst teaching you can possibly do, but the easiest teaching you could possibly do, uh, the televisor. <laughs> what? So are you going to watch a movie? Yeah, I think that's what that means. You're going to watch a movie. <laughs> Oh my gosh, oh this version I can change their salary. So let's go really let's be horrible people. This lady Oh you're a monster. This is letting you live out your wildest fantasy this Sean. I'm having some volume issues though now. Let me see if I can fix that. I think I turn the sound effects off maybe. There we go. I'm turning sound off I'm trying to turn sound off on this game because it keeps getting too loud for us to talk. Um, but yeah, so I've now reduced both salaries down to $130 a day. I hired this poor teacher on at uh, $400 a day, and now she only makes 130 Oh. And she's got to be super mad at me. Oh. I'm not a good... I'm not a nice principal, and I'm not a good person, and I'm okay with that. I mean, that's the nice thing about video games. You get to live out these dreams of yours. Oh, these are bathrooms. And there's, oh. and there's sensor bars over the ones in use. Well, I mean, at least it's not as... At least it's not as... That's what I'm looking for. 
graphic as Shower With Your Dad Simulator 2015. Oh, okay. Seth says this version of the game, the first level is much, much harder. And I have just made it really hard on myself by making the teachers awful. So. <laughs> JLT3893 in chat says, a, teach, a school with no teachers, the dream. <laughs> that's that's I, just like a hovel. Yeah, yeah. That is that is kind of, it reminds me of Calvin and Hobbes, where he just, Calvin just hated going to school. And he always had these fantasies of blowing up his school with a jet fighter and stuff Those like that. Those are the most beautifully illustrated strips, too. Yeah. Yeah, or that, or the the strips where it was a T Rex and an F sixteen. Yeah, that was awesome too. Bill Watterson, <laughs> Bill Watterson, like it, it, I, I both am sad and totally respect him for refusing to do any more comics. Like he never did oh, comics totally. before, then he did that, and then he's just like, no, I'm done. I, I perfected the art form. Don't need to do it anymore. Yeah, yeah, and I would say that I've tried finding comics after Kelvin and Hobbes that, that would just grab me the way that it did. And none of them have. I've Nothing has hit that kind of perfect moment or that, that perfect storm for me. He very well, I think, captured like what it feels like to be a, a an unhappy um, six-year-old. six-year-old boy with an attitude, you know? Oh, like an unhappy, incredibly intelligent, wildly imaginative six-year-old boy with an attitude. Right, like... But man, that kid... Man, those toilets are really loud in this version of the game. I am going to see if I can do anything to uh, to reduce that. I don't think I have the ability to reduce the game audio individually, unfortunately. Um, hey, Sean. Yes. Have you ever flushed the toilet while you were on the phone with somebody? Well, no, because I'm not a terrible person like you who uses the toilet while he's on the phone with somebody. I, I mean... I have been in public bathrooms, however, and experienced that from one stall over. <laughs> <laughs> i that's the problem you know when you're home and you, if you live alone i live i live alone i don't have any roommates or anything it's so easy just to keep a phone conversation going just and you not break it up just because nature calls so we're gonna find the child with the lowest humanity i can and i have a pineapple ray and i'm gonna try and use it on here we go latoll over and over again you have a ton of pineapples as it is. Well, I want more. I am I am not a nice person. Are you going to cut them up and dip them dip them in caramel? You are not a nice person. <laughs> I mean, they're pineapples. They aren't human. You're not human. I, some days I do question that. I can't get the the ray to work. But anyway, so far, let's see. What are we doing? Wow, we are not making money. He's right. It's a lot harder. We're we're in the hole. Our our <laughs> teachers are making the bare minimum. They're getting the same grades as they did in the last version of the game. <laughs> and we're uh, we're down fifteen hundred dollars. Wow. Then so we're only gonna make forty four hundred dollars today from the look of it. Well. So Sean, do you what type of PC games do you usually after? Is this do you play a lot of management sims or no? I haven't in a long time. Um, it's I used to play some of them like Theme Hospital. I really enjoyed back okay. in the day. That was a fun one. Um. But like modern ones, not too much. So this is this is definitely kind of a return. This, and if, if if you if I'm doing bad, that's pretty much why it's not the kind of game I've done for a while. You know, right? Uh, See, so here is how I think he knew we were playing the wrong version. And the previous ver uh, alpha we played with, you could see the bus through this wall. And in this alpha, you cannot. Oh. Just little okay. visual Unity glitches. I think that yeah. he's, he's cleaning yeah. up, and he's done a lot to uh, to fix those. I think, like he was explaining some of the some of the hurdles before we started. Um, on our test earlier that he's fixed right 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 oh and now well, now there's a nighttime mode when it's uh the oh, sun you can teach kids at night no 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 it's just the sun goes down before oh. the sun was up all night long oh okay yeah when when i talked when i spoke with with seth earlier this year he kind of said that some of his inspirations were prison architect because it had it kind of hit the same kind of tone and feel like it it, it was dealing with a kind of a, a thing that you wouldn't expect to be in a game. Arc, you know, designing a prison. Oh, Why, yeah. That, that sort of thing. So I, I like the fact that he's making a game that very much has a message. And to, to speak to what I'm going to say, I'm probably slaughtering how you pronounce this, Wizar in chat, uh, I, I don't know that this is a protest, protest game, but it's definitely a game with a message. 
Right, it's it's a game, it's not a protest, because a protest is, you know, usually disruptive or is very public. It is a game with a statement, though, and so it's kind of when you're talking about games as art, this is a game that makes a statement. Mm-hmm. You know, and it, it's it's a game with social commentary baked in, which some games try and they're good, are too hand, hand, hand-fisted or... Or it's not the appropriate venue, you know. And but indie games, it's much it's much easier to have those kind of statements made. I, I can't think of any other ones off the top of my head that are really overt statements, though. Maybe this. Um, papers, please. Papers, please. Uh, Her story, which I haven't played yet, which is more right. like a choose your own video game. Mm-hmm. I'm a big fan of those style of games. Right, like I and like narrative and and something that makes you think is always really interesting. Um, it's, this is just weird for me in particular though, because I've been so removed from school for, you know, long enough that I just, I'm not thinking about school anymore at all, you know? Oh, I wish that I could say the same. You know, well, yeah, that's right. You're still in class. Like I haven't thought about school. I've, I only think about school periodically in terms of like, should I go back to school? And usually no. I'm like, nah, you know, no. like, cause, no. cause unless I want to learn a new, and I've decided no, unless I want to learn an outright skill because I went to school for, um, radio tv film and theater production and i'm a writer so it doesn't really (laughs) yeah yeah i mean right now i am in my penultimate semester of college i I, i've been going part-time for way too long but i'm almost done i'm really happy about that yeah i know people that have been going part-time for over a decade you know and it's because they're working full-time at other jobs you know my one of my friends she works at yahoo and and uh, Yahoo's HR department. She makes really good money over there, but she's still in school. You know, taking one one class or two a year because that's mm-hmm. what she has time for, and she really wants to finish yeah. her degree. Yeah, I I don't have the bandwidth to take more than two classes at a time. Oh yeah, so that's tough. You know, I, it takes a lot of time. Even yeah. when I, even when I took last time I took a class was about four or five years ago, and it was just an art class for my own entertainment, and it sucked up so much of my time. It was pretty hard to deal with. Yeah, so I mean, at this point, you know, in terms of engagement, I'm I I work at least fifty hours a week, minimum, and just having the time to devote to school and homework and reading, and so it's just it's impossible. But I mean, I'm I'm super excited because I'm almost done, and I I'm just working on my bachelor's degree. I don't see myself going back for anything for an awfully long time if I do. I think I see why I'm having a a hard time with this, Tim. Not to well, ignore, not so. to ignore your point. A lot of these kids don't have a class. Check out this kid's schedule. She's got nothing in uh, you, in first period. Can you, can you assign them classes? I don't know. I just learned this. The, the The tutorial told me you have unassigned students. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Maybe I can show only unassigned. Pineapples don't even have classes. You guys, all you guys care about is grades. Why aren't you assigned? Get, get into math class. I don't. I don't understand. <laughs> You know, these pineapples are getting really good scores, though. That one's got an A. You, can, you go to well, hey, human and they got ba- an F. Hmm? Not bad. To, uh, they have an A, and they don't even go to class. That is way not bad. Well, they could go to one class. But oh. It's, I'm having a hard time here. And we're $4,300 in the hole. Oh, hmm. boy. We should go back to the easy version of this game with the glitches. <laughs> <laughs> it's really hard. I, I keep upgrading this this lady's spells and it's not working. Maybe I should pay her more. Let's let's let's. I mean, we're in the hole anyway. Maybe they'll do better if they have better. Yeah, I might as well just bankrupt the school. Yeah. Mm. And uh, and see where we're going. How do I get these kids to go to class though? Can you highlight and select them and then drag and drop? No, it's not working as far as I know. Unless it, there's a tutorial that I missed. Maybe if I press shift. No. Oh, I'm not getting oh. any pop up windows. I don't know what I'm doing anymore. Oh my god. Okay. Relax, shot. They're all they're all congregating. Well, there are an awful lot of pop up windows. Yeah, there's quite a few. I'm, there's not too many. Well, this person, this poor person, they're 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 fat and weak. <laughs> that's their traits. And they wow, that's well, that's saying something. Yeah, it's just you know, maybe if I tease them, they'll get better. Can you do that? I there's I don't know. Like I know that teasing some of them will re- eliminate some of their traits. Oh God. Like, wow. friends with, like, if you get teased, they'll get a plus one for learning because I guess they won't be focused on being friends anymore. All right, let's just fast forward. Man, these kids, this is, like, the like the most carefree charter school ever. They spend most of their day. These kids just went from hanging out in the front room directly to lunch. I mean, that's, this sounds like my dream. I don't know. I During school, I was a bad student because I couldn't, 
I kind of feel like my brain as a human being didn't turn on until high school. I was, I was, I was about to say, I don't know if it's still fully turned on sometimes. Well, I mean, it, it works now, right? Whereas, like, I didn't understand, like, basic things, you know, like, life. Like, like one plus one equals three. No, no, like, like paying attention or, oh. or realizing you have to do your homework or that if you did your homework and you don't turn it in, it doesn't count. Wait, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. You did the homework, but you didn't turn it in? I forget. <laughs> ah! Or they wouldn't ask me. Like, apparently, like, on the first day of school, my mom says this is what happened. On the first day of school, they tell us when you come in, you put your homework here. I didn't hear that because I was always daydreaming, right? Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. Looks like we got a freeze here. There it goes. Oh, Sean. Oh, it's freezing up. I'm going to I'm gonna restart this, folks, because... Okay. okay. And like I said, we are playing an alpha version of this game. This is not the final code. So there are going to be some glitches. And as Sean rec recognized and said, that a lot of things have changed from the previous build that we are playing to now. And this is going to be expected. So this is not indicative of the final version of the game, which comes out later this year. So, Sean, Sean, school. So that whole thing. Hi. See, my thing, I graduated high school with a 3.06 cumulative GPA, and that was without doing anything or exerting myself. I don't want to say I didn't do anything. I just didn't exert myself. I was in marching band and, and concert band for four years. I never practiced my, my saxophone at home. I, I, did, I did basically the bare minimum, and I managed to get... A 3.0, which is a B average, which was pretty okay. I mean, it wasn't going to get me any scholarships. It wasn't going to get me anything. So you but know I, what? I, I passed. You know what best illustrates the difference right now between you and me, Tim? What's that? You know what your GPA was. I never knew that. Not uh, once. Not in college. Not in high school. I, I I got about C's. Is the closest answer you could ever get for me. If it was on a resume, what was your GPA? I'd be like, Pfft, eh. Oh, in college, my GPA is like a 2.75. See, I didn't know that in college. It didn't matter. You know, I'm like, it, especially, uh, my, you know, okay, my family situation didn't help. You know, we knew. I was told, right, like, a lot of kids are like, oh, work hard and do good on the SATs because you want to get into a good college, right? I was told, don't bother. You're not going to, uh, you're not going to get into a good college right away. We can't afford it. You're going to go to a community right. college. Don't work too hard. Have a good time. Relax. Uh, figure <laughs> out what you want to do. Don't take the SATs. So none of that mattered to me because I knew exactly what I was going to do years ahead of time. I was going to go to community college because that's what we, Sean, we could afford. Sean, we, we have a we have a very – our lives mirror. Oh, yeah. I didn't come from a rich family or anything like oh, that. I'm not you saying know. you did. I'm saying but you knew what your GPA oh, was. No. You you cared more than I did or at least your well, parents did. I No, I knew what my GPA was because a couple of the friends that I knew, they did really well in school. Like blah, 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 blah. But I didn't. I, I didn't. It was, it was the same idea. Neither of my parents had gone. Or my, my mom went to community college. She didn't finish. Uh, my dad went to a trade school. So it wasn't ever really super like, all right, you're going to college. There's no choice around it. It was, I was like, oh, I think I want to go to college. My dad said, how are you going to pay for it? I was like, oh, oh, okay, that. Yeah. So, it was, yeah. So I went, it was yeah. very much I'm going to college. But, like, it wasn't really hammered on to the extent that, like, the first summer after high school, Right. Oh my gosh! Stop making noise, monstrous device. Um. Uh. The first summer after high school, we were hanging out in my friend's garage playing Smash Brothers, and he says, "You know, I think I'm gonna go register for school today." I'm like, "What school?" He's like, "You know, college." I'm like, "Oh yeah, hey, I think I'll go with you." <laughs> that's that's literally how my my college career started because you know I uh it, I just didn't occur to me. Right. Like I said, right. I think it took me until halfway through college before my brain turned on as a human being. Right. I went to, let's see, because I completed the MEEP test, which is a Michigan educational assessment. So I don't know what the thing stands for. But I completed that, and I got, I got like, 2500 bucks towards school, and I, I used that up. And I was like, oh, I should probably finish this. And I did, and then, you know, I, I'm, I'm where I am now. And college did not teach me how to write. It gave me the inkling to be like, oh, hey, you know, you do good writing and doing journalistic style stuff go and do that see the reason i the reason i wound up exploring um this career is because 
uh, writing essays was the only thing I was ever any good at and or enjoyed in school. You know, right. everyone else, oh, yeah, too. everyone else like an essay and everyone be like, oh, man, I hate it. She's like, oh, great. Easy. I'll be done like no problem. And it'll be entertaining to me. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, Melee's rock hole has turned into a pineapple. We're doing good this time. Someone's a pineapple. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we got our first pineapple conversion. <laughs> we got a two-point conversion at the goal line I'm, with a pineapple. I'm, I'm a little too excited about this this pineapple situation, you know, but we, we never uh, we never had a pineapple before. Melee's for Hegel. That is definitely a Game of Thrones name. It has to be. Oh, man, seriously. Even better than uh, than a pineapple is even better about a pineapple is they don't use the bathroom so you don't have to hear the toilets flushing all the time <laughs> so what you're telling me is that you have a vested interest for the stream to never have actual human students you want them to be nothing but pineapples all pineapple all the time because if they're uh, if they're pineapples they're not a problem so let's see this if person is is having a good let's see use the pineapple ray on her now she is less humanity yeah if only there were there was a pool out back and the pool was full of nothing but caramel you're so weird oh 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 she's almost no. a pineapple she's almost oh, she's a pineapple oh. i turned her into a pineapple i'm really happy we have two pineapples everybody oh yeah well i'm not as weird as the people that say that pronounced caramel is caramel is who does that in the real world i do Oh, I hate you. I do both. It depends on the word before it or after it, I think. Depends on the context. It depends on the context. Okay, so there's... It's regional stuff. Get over it. Like, I had a friend. Um, She didn't say wafer. She said waffer. What? That is not a word. Right. It, and, and and wherever she grew up, um, it wasn't mayonnaise. It was salad dressing, which I think could get very confusing. Uh, Well, no. Salad dressing is Miracle Whip. Well, not for her that area. Is. For her area, it was mayonnaise. Miracle Whip is Miracle Whip. Salad dressing is any multitude of things that you put on a salad. Sure. From from ranch to vinaigrette. You know. I, I, I get that, but... Okay, so who puts mayonnaise or Miracle Whip on a salad? That's I mean, you, the real I, thing I don't understand. Yeah. I mean, I get making chicken salad or tuna salad with mayonnaise or Miracle Whip. But anything else, I, I don't, yeah, I don't get calling it. Uh. Come on, where, where did it go? I was trying to pineapple ray you. Ah, this, this kid just wants to be a human too bad. I can't, I'm trying to turn you into a pineapple. Oh, uh, you need to eliminate their humanity. Oh, just... I, don't, I don't have any energy because I'm not paying the math teacher enough. I guess I can pay her a little bit more. <laughs> If only to turn to develop another pineapple. Right. If only to develop another pineapple. I use actually. I know why she's broke. I, I used up all her money um, turning that other kid into a pineapple. But look, I've got a I've got a positive daily of, of eighteen hundred. I'm oh. really getting into this now that I'm learning how to do it. I, I, I like how excited you are. I I have been able to hear your excitement change and progress as we've been playing. Well, because I mean, I, I'm usually not into these games, but now that I'm learning how to how to turn. Ruin children's lives by turning them into soulless, grade churning husks of deliciousness. <laughs> now that I, I am That's making a, better. I am making a difference in these children's lives. <laughs> you know, it, it's it's I am I am helping them. Um, <laughs> and I don't know how to clear all these messages I have on the side now. I've got all these problems. Oh, and see now that I'm paying her more, I only made a hundred and ninety dollars. It's uh, not efficient no there there's a definite risk reward mechanic at play here yeah it's pretty tough you know actually it's, it's a really hard game i'm looking forward to the final version and see um if the difficulty is more scalable or just um if it gets a little easier like it's taking me it's taking me a while to figure out i think how to play it like i don't think it was the most straightforward thing i've ever played no i don't i don't think this game you know, I didn't imagine this game would be very straightforward whatsoever. But indie games are kind of like that, right? You don't have to... They don't play into stereotypes or genres or archetypes. It's uh, it's it's just... it's They are what they are. Yeah. I think if you click on the arrows on the left side of those messages, you'll be able to clear them away. Oh, oh, oh my goodness, that totally works. That is so much easier. I mean, look at all these kids that turn into pineapples, though. Look at their names. 
Les Valand, Carl Frups, Miles Rogel, Martin Sank, Taggy. It's it's kind of like the lorem ipsum that yeah. that's used in page design. It's like a name generator or something. Uh oh. Now we we'll have to ask Seth about that in about a half hour when we have him onto the stream. But we're not doing good though. I'm uh. Uh oh. I'm 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 a negative. I don't know how to make money here. Let's see. School oh, yeah. grades. Twenty four students times Fs. They're getting Fs. <sighs> wow. Sean, Just look at the students. Oh yeah, so we have a off-topic question from chat. Uh -huh. Chris Alberti one two three asks thoughts on the Mad Max game. I well, haven't, I haven't played it yet. Have you played it? No, I have not played it. I have heard not promising things uh, in in the community of folks that have played it, and that's really sad considering they they timed the game's release. That could probably be why it's bad. They timed the game's release with the Blu-ray release of Mad Max Fury Road. And based on what I've heard, the game, it's adequate, but that's it. So that's kind that's of really sad. that's kind of what spoils a lot of games, I think, is they want to be... They're either, they have to either wait before they can develop something um, because of, they don't want spoilers to get out through the game company, or right. they have to rush to get it done so it'll, it'll be a timed launch. And yeah, and... That, I, I, go, go ahead. Well, I'm, I just think that's why a lot of them are so bad. I didn't even know the Mad Max was coming coming out, you know. And I have I still haven't seen the movie, even though I know it's how well oh, it's been. Oh, I hate you, Sean. I haven't had time, man. So, it, I've been meaning to, but I haven't seen it. But even right away, I was like, oh, it's probably not going to be that good because how many tie-in games are really great? I mean, there was Spider-Man Two was the, the only one I can think of every single time. Um, there's a lot of ones that had potential and just didn't make it, you know. Yeah, it's been a while since we had a high-profile movie tie-in game that flopped. Well, they always flop. Ah, uh, Goldeneye didn't. Well, yeah, but how long ago was that? We're talking like, what, 1996? <laughs> like, 20 years ago? <laughs> oh, God, don't make me recognize my own mortality. Okay, 19 years ago? Look, well, that, I... that game can vote, all right? That game can, like, <laughs> that game can go to war. That game can serve its country, you're right. Yeah, that game can do everything you see in that game. <laughs> All right, it's it's legal. Cuz I mean it, it's the it's it's a James Bond game, but he doesn't get down or drink in that game. I don't think oh, I lost. Oh. So, man, this is a lot harder. 2 weeks have passed and the school earned our school lost $3,000. But you know what really disturbs me about this? They were all pineapples and you still lost. Yeah, they were all pineapples. I still lost, but more importantly, the pineapples are robots. What? If you look at the losing oh! image. Oh, yeah, I'm seeing this. Yeah. Yes, it's... Sorry, that's that's another thing we need to ask Seth about once he comes on at 7.30. Ugh, okay, let's uh, let's go next. Oh! Uh, Yaro brings up a good point. He says most tie-in games now are mobile. That's true, actually. If you notice, the last several Batman games did not have movie tie-ins, as well as the last yeah. Spider-Man movie. It right. Was, it was a mobile game, and it was a pretty. Um, I didn't play very much of it, but it looked like a pretty decent ripoff of Arkham. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard about that. Yeah, and I was like, you know, for what it is, you know. I think that mobile games are probably the best uh, best avenue for licensed games now, well, or movie at... games, because they can if they they just have to nail mobile games by their very nature have to nail one mechanic and do it really well. Well, look and at what uh, Konami is now. Oh, oh. They, they, we're, we're not going to talk about Konami because I have I have opinions on Metal Gear, even though I haven't played that game, and they are very strong. I I have no care for I, I care not for Metal Gear. No, I was we were offered advanced or not advanced copies, but we were offered. Oh no, we were offered to go to the review event in Southern California, and we turned it down because we cover our own travel and the idea of sitting in a hotel room and marathoning through a game is a nightmare and it's not something that we would want to put anybody through right. but we were offered a copy of it last week and i was like i have no interest in this game whatsoever i've never played a metal gear or i played half of no. metal gear solid 2 substance on the original xbox yeah no nope. oh, we have a problem oh uh, what'd you do sean we have audio problems um and i can't fix them uh oh. Can you just mute the game wholesale? I do not see a way to do that without muting um, our game audio, unfortunately. Oh. 
Let me see what I can do. Skype. Okay. Well. You... Oh yeah. I can... Oh there we go. Okay, finally. Okay. So the so Windows got its act together. I can just turn the game audio all the way down and even turn Skype up a little bit. So now we're good. Hey. Uh. So, Yaddle says that. Do not drip robo pineapples in caramel. I don't know. You don't think it would help? I, I, I don't think so. Well, first off, I don't think robo pineapples would be delicious. They might cause some dental problems when you bit down on them. I think I think it could I think it could help uh, with with some of the the motor oil taste. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm no uh, expert when it comes to to cooking robots, but. Well, I was gonna say, have you ever, have you ever had hydraulic fluid or or gotten motor oil or any automotive liquid in your mouth? It's not a fun time. No, but I saw an episode of Mash once where the crazy one tried to eat a Jeep and he got a stomach ache, so I assume it's not good. Oh, I've had well, transmission fluid is basically hydraulic fluid, and I've had that in my mouth. It's not a good time. I promise you that. I challenge that. I I want to I want to see you eat some and then explain the experience to me. I'm see, not going to try I, it myself because oh. I have stomach issues, you know. Well, well, I do too, but uh, it might be explained by this. But the of all the automotive fluids, if you need to get anything into your mouth, I recommend antifreeze. It's it's sweet. It's also poisonous. That's why you're not supposed to leave it out because cats will drink it and kill, or animals will drink it and then die. But there's a reason why they'll drink it, because it tastes pretty okay. Really? Antifreeze? Yeah, it's very sweet. It's ethyl, uh, ethylene glycol, so I it's always, a sugar base. I always assumed it would taste really bad. No, antifreeze tastes pretty okay. I wouldn't drink a glass of it, but it's not a terrible taste to have in your mouth. So it's not the worst thing if, it, if an accident happens. Right, right. So, God, this is, this is what our, our stream is, talking about pineapples and then drinking automotive fluids. So what, what you're saying to get really dark tim if you're oh god if you're gonna kill yourself antifreeze is not the most disgusting way right i mean right. maybe maybe the painful experience is painful right speaking of I, bad, I would imagine there's gonna be a lot of vomiting involved speaking of bad things in general i want to i want to focus on how evil these teachers are i want you to see what the, the laser skill this person has that they can inflict on students is unfriender nova right oh. And end a friendship. And ending a friendship brings a spell. Yes, ending a friendship brings a, a student's grades up by five points. You're wow. a better student if you don't have friends. Good lord. I mean, I can I can see that. I guess, but isn't it sad? I mean, how many popular kids were were the best students that you knew, Sean? Um, one of them. But yeah, you're right. School for nerds. Well, I mean, I, I was a nerd. I just ended this kid's friendship with someone. <laughs> Yaddle says, the jank isn't mechanical. It's more of a conceptual jank. Oh, now. and her quest was to have a new friend. Oh, you are a dick. Yeah, it's <laughs> not nice. Uh, we were on about something before we started having technical problems. Uh, we were talking about just being terrible people. I'm a good person. I'm an Eagle Boy Scout. These these students aren't good. Look at them. They're they're getting an F in math. I, I was a Weebolo. That's 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 as far as I went. That's very I, close to I a Boy Scout. I started and stopped at Weebolos. That's very close to a Boy Scout. A Weebolo is kind of like the intermediary inter, intermediary rank. I liked Boy Scouts. It was fun. Yeah, camping. All right. So I do have a question. Yes. These grades that are on the chalkboards, is that indicative of how well those students are doing? I think it's uh, I think it's actually of how well my last spell was cast. Okay, because you have a D- and an F, and yeah. I have a bad feeling about this school. Well, the students are getting Cs. The pineapples are getting Cs even, so we're not very good teachers. Um, and all, oh. the, all the humans are getting Fs and Ds. So. Well, Sean, I'm going to blame this on you and your administration i am not gonna beat this level this is i'm really bad at this i'm not a good school administrator which is uh which is good because i applied for a job at a school once oh really did yeah. you know yeah and um they never was called... this a regular school or a I public don't... school or what it, I, it was a private school because you need a teaching credential if you're not if it's any other school oh so i applied okay. to this uh private school 
And I never heard back from them. And I think the reason I never heard back from them is I insulted them. <laughs> that is also going on Twitter. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, they, they so they had this, they had this. Uh, the, I was reading the instructions, you know, it was, and it was like, it was like, you know, must have this, must have that. Don't worry if you can't teach. We're happy to train you. I'm like, all right, that sounds great. And then it said, please submit your resume, your work experience. And a short essay on your views of America, and I went. Oh out. God! And so I went into the email or whatever I sent to them. It's like, hey, this is why I'm great. This is why you should be interested in me. I've always been interested in teaching, and it sounds like you're a, a good place to start out. Um, however, I think it's a little bit too early in the blind inter- in the blind application process to be submitting original content. In the meantime, I invite oh, you to God. read this other stuff I've written in the past. You know, and I said, if you consider oh, me to wow. be a useful candidate, I'll happily oblige at a later time. But you know, like, wow. Who? Sean, there is a time and a place to be honest, and a job application is not one of them. Oh, I'm not going to waste my time on an application they're probably going to look at and say, oh, he doesn't live in the right zip code, and not even read the essay. Not to mention, an Essay on America is basically a screening process for do you agree with the political views of the administration of this school? You know, so. I was, I was not pleased with that. I'm still interested in being a teacher at some point, maybe. You know, I think that would be a... I don't know what I would teach. You know, like blogging isn't exactly a, a highly demanded skill. But it is a well. I mean, it's, I, it's not that it's undemanded. I just mean it's not something they teach in elementary school. Oh no. Well, our coworker Richard Lawler, he said that he went. He spoke at a friend of his his classroom once, and he said that there wasn't a you know there this job didn't is it didn't exist when I was in school. Yeah, I did true. not go to school to do this. You know, you can if you have a passion, you can make a job out of it. Maybe I uh, maybe I look down on that because um, because you hate Arla. Well, I did, no, I love Richard. He's he's the best. Um, I, I, I we we have we have a history together. Uh oh, yes, a, a history that will not be spoken of on the stream because it will paint you in a very bad light. I I'm, I uh, anyway. So, um, what was it? You had me. So I'm, I'm jaded because in um, – oh, we're having freezing again. Yeah, this uh, this version of the game is not very very happy with me. Well, oh, well you goes. figured that out. Yarmul says that he made it to Tenderfoot, but he never learned to swim, so he couldn't progress any further. Oh, yeah. Yarmul, I cannot swim either, so don't worry about it. I, I sort of half-ass doggy paddle, and that's about it. That's right. Tenderfoot is the uh, the swimming badge times. Sean, can you swim? Yeah, I can't do uh, big arms though. I don't know what that is. I, I don't. Know, it's over arms. They call it big arms at my my swim school when I was a kid. Um, I can't do that because I mom, you know, the swim school shut, shut down, and she was like, "Ah, your brothers can swim. You'll be fine." <laughs> yeah, you'll just pick it up via osmosis. I don't know. So I didn't. Uh, this game is totally crashing. So we're gonna have to reboot it again. I'm sorry, folks, uh, but it'll only take a second. This is what happens when you work with alphas, though. So I mean, they're they're in development, and it could you know it could be one of my settings. Could be that it's not not really enjoying working with uh, OBS. You know, that's that's sort of it. It could just be because you're the worst. It could be that I'm worse. We're gonna, I mean, that's a very distinct possibility. We're gonna try it in a different display mode really quick, and um, and let me know if that comes up, Tim. Okay. And it should, but. Actually, it's probably not coming up. Let's see. Uh, no, it looks it looks like it's coming up, so that's good. Cool. It's coming up. Okay. I li- hold on uh, for a second. I well, you can keep going, but I just want to say because it was on the stream just briefly now. The the splash screen, the menu screen, it looks like an old propaganda poster. Oh yeah, it looks totally great. I mean, we have well, Markov Heights sounds explicitly like something you would see in Soviet Russia. Maybe, maybe that's why we can't read any of the names. That see this, there are going to be some very good questions for Seth once we bring them up. And, 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 and maybe that makes this a a Cold War commentary game as well. I don't think so. I think because Seth is from Boston, and this game is set in a fictitious Boston. So Boston is a floating island. Uh, yes. Well, in, no in wonder s- they think they're so high and mighty and better than us. Well, I mean, I'm kidding. I don't know anything about. I'm, I'm kind of curious how how being a mass hole if it does play into this oh my god you're right this is a floating island yeah this is. is very much definitely it's an iceberg it is yeah it's literally a floating island it's really weird 
Um, and I, 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 I it's, that's fine because I mean, why would you really need to see anything else? But uh, Seth in chat says that Markov Heights is a reference to Markov Geist, the setting of Frozen Synapse. Ooh, there you go. And there we have it. What was I saying? I was trying to tell you a story about um, teachers and, or at least the teachers we grew up with. And the value of what we do now. And uh, once upon a time in high school, I took a journalism class. And I didn't actually want to take journalism because I remember when they said I should take journalism. I'm like, what's that? That sounds like the newspaper. I don't want to do that, right? And they said, oh, no, it's not the newspaper. You, I think you just learned to keep journals. And I'm like, that sounds not true, but I believe you because you're a counselor. It turns out, of course, it was the newspaper class, you know. Right. But, um, and that was fine. So I, I took that class. And a couple, about 10 years later, I met the teacher that taught that class. And, um, and what do you know, I'm doing tech journalism for a living. Right. And, um, and, and I talk about it and she's like, Oh, that's good. Good for you. But she didn't seem like she believed me or thought that it was real. Cause she didn't really understand, you know, what blogging was, you know? And she's like, Oh, it was so exciting. You know, we had a, uh, one of our old students come by and, uh, and give a speech to the students about what he does for a living now. And like, he did something for a living that was like, we worked in, uh, you know, um, coding and tech or something, right? And I'm like, hey, you know, yeah. I could come talk to the journalism class and tell them what it's like in the modern online journalism world. And she's like, oh, no, I don't think that would be useful. And I was like, okay. Oh. You know, like, she, she kind of, like, just blew me off with, like, this really wow. dismissive. And so, like, I kind of, like, I don't think there's, a, at least with the old guard teachers that I had, they don't understand the value in the modern media kind of thing. And I understand right. that. I don't really falter for that. She's She was, you know from a different generation right but that's this is my big problem that i have with i'm taking i am majoring in public relations because there's a degree path i started much 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 before i started writing for engadget mm. and I'm on basically a full-time basis and my my professors are people are former publicists or public relations professionals that are doing it as a retirement job and therefore they have been out of the field for 10 15 or more years oh so and they're, they're advocating like nightmare. yeah uh last year i had a class media relations writing which was basically oh hey you're gonna write some press releases and whatnot the second class my professor told me yeah when you know when you're out in the field you're not gonna be pitching webs you're gonna be pitching primarily newspapers and magazines not so much websites and at that point i said to myself, I cannot take a word you say seriously from this time out. And that was the second time we'd met. <laughs> oh, did well. you did you explain to him what you do for a living and the kind of pitches you get I, on a daily basis? I, I yeah, I explained this to her. I was like, this is a this is madness. And the thing is, is the journalism professor that I had, she was a teacher, or she was not a teacher. She was an editor at the newspaper that I freelanced for prior at the very beginning of my writing career. And she, you know, due to buyouts and, and downsizing, or due to downsizing, she, she took a buyout, and then she started teaching journalism at the college I go to. And she knew what was up, because she had very recently just been employed as a journalist. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have not gone to speak to her class yet, but she's been very interested in, the, in, in me doing so. But yeah, it's just the idea of teachers being so out of touch. And like you said, you're... Your teacher would be like, oh, yeah, just completely dismissing it. It blows me away, but it happens. It's a media change, and I think that's true. I mean, there's that old joke, if you can't do, you teach. And that's I think that actually only applies to a very specific subset of of college or or for retirees. I think the elementary school, despite the, the theme of this game, is much more important. I found if, if you're an intelligent individual and uh, and you learn the basics, you can do anything. You know, which um, you and I are not. We are not intelligent, intelligent individuals. And we've we can, and we've still learned the basics, and we're doing okay. So if morons, so if morons can do it, right? You know, but I mean, I think I think that's really important. Um, like I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of when we had Lavar Burton at um in Gadget Expand a couple years ago. It was a big deal to me mm -hmm. because he ensures a very the basic skill that you need to do anything you want. You know, because if you right. if you're literate, you can learn anything you want. You can figure anything out. You can do anything. You know. Yeah. Um, so I think there's, there's in, in a lot of ways, the focus on college these days, I mean, it's still important, but I think it's less important than it once was in some way. Right. right. Like, 
college did not teach me how to be a writer or a journalist. I right. Picked and, all my and up on the college comments. won't te teach you if you do wind up going into PR at some point. It won't teach you how to do PR either. It'll teach you. College teaches you how to research and how to study and how to figure yep. things out. You know, I I didn't yep. learn anything that I use in my life except for the skills I learned to get through college are the same skills I learn I use at work. And that's yeah, that's that's the depressing thing. And that, that's something I'm struggling with at school now is I'm taking outdated classes and I'm jaded and I can tell these are outdated and then I have 22 year olds all around me. I'm 30 years old. No, oh, yeah. I've, I have 22 year olds all around me that are taking everything the professors say as gospel and it's like, "Oh god, these kids." And I just it's it's a patience test. Also, Sean, I realize we went from a D plus to an F. <laughs> I'm trying, all right. I'm zapping them with the cheating race. So they cheat and get better grades. I also went from being from having six hundred dollars ahead toward our thousand dollar goal to being two thousand fifty dollars in the hole. Look, this he's right, this version of the game is a lot harder, man. Sean, what are you doing? Do you want to try? I, 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 if I had the game installed, if we had this build of the game installed, I would. Oh my gosh. I, I so will try this this weekend. See, I'm just as bad at school as a, a administrator as I am. As a student. As a student. And so let's try the quantification and see, get him to cast a different spell. <laughs> Maybe better spells. Oh my gosh. This is, this is fantastic. I, I love that we, that you're struggling with this so much. I'm, I am, I'm going to reduce their wages profit. down to bare minimum for oh the God. sake of profit for you. I don't think that we're going to pass this one either. This is, see, this is almost as bad as when we were playing Batman and we had to virtually pass the controller as, as Batgirl because I could not beat that one section for an hour. I beat a level. And look, we're, we got a C average now. Oh, hey. I, I, That's good. I don't really know how that works. We've got a C. Well, there's still a lot of children in here. There are not a lot of pineapples. I think there were more pineapples in the last build, right? Yeah, I think there are more pineapples. I'm trying to get enough money to buy the pineapple ray so I can turn more people into pineapples. That sentence doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, in the context of the game, it does. It, it sentence It's like one of those things. Like, Did I ever think I would say I need a pineapple ray so I can... Turn more people into pineapples? Well, I mean, that's what Playdate's all about. <laughs> We're breaking new ground here. But you're right about um, learning in school and taking... That's why college, you have so many people whose opinions in about the world match that the community within the college. People are very impressionable when they're in their early 20s and just getting into college because they're on their own. Their mind is open. So they'll take whatever the pressure says, not only about the outdated subject matter, but about whatever political thing they say and and some sometimes this is an empowerment for uh for teachers but it doesn't always lead to the best so i had a i had a, a music history course right and we were stuttering studying you know like bach and such right i like how you stuttered over saying stuttering 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 <laughs> <laughs> we were studying bach and the various uh the various styles of baroque music and whatever that is and then at one point this was during one of the presidential election cycles i don't remember which one or what side he was arguing for so it doesn't matter um he just started arguing some political point about whatever congress was doing and why this guy would be the worst president and i got up and left you know and a couple yeah. and, and later that day he said why did you walk out of class like oh well you were talking about the presidential election and not ancient music so i thought mm -hmm. that it wasn't a very useful class session so i left and he's like well it, you know what 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 this this uh, candidate is doing is very relevant to to music history. I'm like, no, it's not. You're full of it. See you later. Yeah. <laughs> and I was I was oh. I was a monster to him, a complete jerk. But I just I got sick of of my time being wasted. And I've told you about right. this before. I also had a teacher who um, whose class I dropped because he was going to fail anyone who didn't go on a special kumbaya camping trip with him. Oh. And it was oh, it was <laughs> it was super creepy, right? Right, yeah. You I know, mean, like, uh, I don't, if I don't spend my free time camping with you, you're going to lower my grade? Never mind, this class ain't for me. Yeah, I had a music appreciation class. Well, I haven't thought about this since I had that class. But it was, we were sitting there, and one of the stoner kids goes, it was, this is, this is a while ago, he goes, can we have a moment of silence because Dimebag Daryl died, the guitarist from Pantera, who was shot on stage by a fan. Oh, wow. Yeah, that was that happened. This is a while ago. It's probably two thousand six, two thousand seven. But yeah, so the professor was like, 
okay, yeah, we can do that. And we had a moment of silence for Dimebag Daryl. And I talked to the kid after class. He goes, yeah, I could tell she would have just let us go with whatever. She was like, ah, oh, I just need to win these kids over. I'll let them have it. <laughs> and it was just, it was, it was so. That's really weird. That was at a community college because, of course, it was. <laughs> the um, the closest thing to that I had was, and and I don't want to, I don't, if you, if you feel a lot about this celebrity, celebrity, you know, I don't want to harsh your feelings for the celebrity we're about. I'm about to I talk mean, about. I it's Katy Perry. I'm not going to stop you. Well, no, no, no. But I mean, I remember once I was I was working in a warehouse for a while. It was a warehouse job, and it is school related because we are a warehouse. Um, this is years before I started in gadget that organized. Uh, the standardized tests. We send out the standardized tests and for all the schools. Right? Oh, this actually ties back it into t- this. Ties directly into this. I was stacking organized test forums and counting them out and sending them to the right schools and packaging them up and being part of the distribution network for sending out those tests for all the schools in California, right? Mm-hmm. And so I'm working there, and then a couple of the guys um, who just wanted out of work for the day stopped working and said, I'm too distressed to work, and I'm going home. And the manager's like, what's wrong with you? What's going on? They're like, Michael Jackson died. I can't package tests anymore. I can't do it. Wow. Yeah. And I was like, really? You don't know Michael Jackson. You know, I mean, wow. maybe you grew up with him in high school and you were passionate about his music, but get back to work. <laughs> yeah. You know, I was kind of, a, I was kind of like not, I lost a lot of respect for those guys. Yeah. I, well, I mean, that's the thing. Hey, hey, Sean, I have a technical issue cropping up. I will be right back. Oh, okay? well, then I'm going to keep talking about random stuff. One of the things I really liked about this game, uh, Dutiful Watchers, Dutiful, uh, not beautiful because then I'd be ripping off a YouTube guy I really like. Um, is whenever you cast a spell, there are very educational, specific things that happen. If you saw just a minute ago the uh, female teacher in the literary class, like letters just spewed from her hands all over the children into their minds. And sometimes when they teach math, like numbers and equations float in front of the board. And it's it's actually really cool little animations uh, for, for, you know, educational magic. And I hope Tim comes back soon, since I'm running this in full screen mode, and I can't see what any of you guys are saying if you're saying anything of of significance but check it out rosary amina turned into a pineapple so we're not doing too bad but we're still doing pretty bad because we need to earn a thousand bucks and we're at a negative 30 50. you know there's some menus here we've been ignoring that we should take a look at uh like we should look at the budget and see that our students are earning a lot of f's and so that's why we're in the negative and the teacher salaries are pretty low though but i don't understand is why maybe maybe these are daily grades let's see in fact by the look of this none of these kids have classes at all maybe i don't know what i'm doing sean do you have kids that are that are unattended to again i don't know i can't figure it out i'm i'm trying to figure out why we have f's all of a sudden i think you just start with an f at the beginning of each day let's we're gonna run an experiment and find this out okay also you'll notice this game place takes place in the future mm-hmm. it's uh it is it is 2016 of next oh. of next week 2016 of next week of next week a week a week and a year from now is that consistently how it happens i don't know i haven't i haven't looked at the date before um it looks okay. like we have a lot of people who aren't in classes though like this pineapple number 23885 doesn't have a grade for first period oh i don't know how to uh, get him in in class though okay seth in chat says that you start with an F, and the grades are daily. Okay, so that explains a lot. Um, it's all so end of day stuff. So, better teacher, Sean. So, is, ask him if, um, or he'll he'll listen to this. Is there, I was going to say, you're asking him right now. Well, is there a way for us to get the students who aren't in classes in classes? And he says, yes, it's 2016, because it's science fiction. It's the future. Oh, okay. So, there's that. Oh, maybe they are in classes and they just hadn't propagated yet because they have... No, so a couple of kids that just don't have first period. I mean, I didn't... Well, I yes, I did. Well, I didn't have... I mean, not in elementary school. I mean, I in high school is when I didn't have... Uh, I had missing periods. We're still in a negative, though, because there's so many kids getting bad grades. Man, this is awful. Like, how would... You know, this kind of... I think he, he must have made it harder to make the point harder, you know? Because... If this right. is really how schools sort of operate, or on a similar system where they're paid out directly from uh, children's grades, uh, then I don't know how how schools could get the resources they need to improve or be better schools. Maybe this is a constant fail state. Like you are not going to win. 
I think there's got to be a way to win because he said he could beat it in an hour. Um, right. But he's, you know, also the developer. But, I mean, imagine if your schools really run like that. I, kn- I know it's different than it used to be, especially with the No Child Left Behind Act and all that, which I'm not very familiar with. Right. Um, but I remember talking to the principal about it when I was in school, right? And one of the reasons my wife wasn't allowed to drop one of the classes she wanted is because uh, pay for the school wasn't determined on performance but on attendance. Oh. And so there was a class she wasn't interested in, and she just didn't go to, but they wouldn't let her drop it. And she got a C in it, even though she never went to class. She went to class like five times throughout the whole year, and they still gave her a C. Um, sure. Uh, and the ironic thing is I was trying to add that class the same time she was trying to drop it, and they wouldn't let me because they didn't think I was smart enough. Like, they told me this to my face, and I was like, I, I hate you guys. Anyway, um, so they they wouldn't let her drop it because it affected the bottom line of the school. Of course. Uh, and and so that's different than it is now. Now if it's it's I think if it's based on grade based pay, which I believe it is partially with the No Child Left Behind Act, um, that's a significant thing on learning. All they had to do was keep kids' butts in the seats before, and now they have to do well too. Right. Well, uh, so Seth in chat says that in all levels, all the kids are enrolled. Half the kids have English book A have English block A, half have math block A and they are reciprocal. Try eliminating friendships with lasers. Each friendship is minus five grades. The fastest win strategy he has found so far is to utilize a teacher to unfriend every single friend until the teacher runs out of energy and then fire them and hire a fresh teacher. (laughs) Oh my god! Oh my god! This game is dark. Holy crap! And uh, we will be not reading Seth's sagely words of wisdom from chat in about eight minutes we will have him on the stream very 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 i'm gonna try that strategy before we get him on though i want to talk about these posters your teachers are smarter and better than you posted in every bathroom in the school that's i'm that's (laughs) those are the demotivational posters i remember there was a this is this is this is a sign of how old Uh, i was it crashed again uh when I was at my first elementary school, there was a picture of the Dodge Intrepid. It was a big poster over the boys' urinals. And I remember a... We didn't know how our bodies worked. So a kid goes... One time, his name was Fred. I won't say his last name because I'm not going to. But it's like... I, when we were saying at the urinals, he goes, I didn't even have to look for mine. It's like, oh, well, that's a thing. You know, I'm looking back at it, that was a, that was a whole... You know, that was a whole thing that happened because we were discovering what, oh, hey, this is what happens with our bodies. So that happened. We didn't have, um, we didn't have demotivational posters, but I mean, because I'm a terrible person and I don't value children as much as I should, I agree with this poster. Your teachers are smarter and better than you. You are a child. You are here to learn. <laughs> the, the one poster that I do remember, the motivational one, was... Your mind is like a parachute. It works best when it's open. Oh, yeah. I guess maybe we did have things like that, and I'm just a, a jerk who doesn't remember. Uh, Seth says he doesn't know what's causing the crash, but it never happens when he plays it. It is probably a curse. Um, no, I'm going to blame this entirely on Sean. It could be. It could be some setting I have or program I have running in the background. It could be because I haven't updated to Windows 10 yet. It could be... Um, because I'm running Windows 8.1, and maybe Seth was running 7 when he developed it, or he developed it on Mac. Uh, maybe it's oh, because I'm... maybe it's because Skype is running at the same time. You never know. Yeah, I'm still trying. So my my really crappy, super cheap Windows desktop that I bought last year for 300 bucks. I've been trying to update it to Windows 10 for the last two days. I went into the Windows update section, and it has been trying to download 1.5 megabytes of updates for an entire day. That sounds weird. Uh, you you, know, you can also download a um, an installer that usually works best. I'm going to do that. Seth says that no, it is not you. It happens 100% of the time when other people play it. Ah, uh, so it's just something about it's on his system works great, but it just needs it right. just needs he just needs debugging and um, yeah. I, I don't know if he has if Unity does, has an easy way to do this, but the ability to do um, uh, just do debugging reports. Gotcha. Um, so. So this this cafeteria, I'm noticing there are one, two, there are about five actual humans in this cafeteria, and that's just students. Yes, 
And I am taking his advice. I have just fired a teacher because he ran out of energy. And I'm wow. Going, I'm going to hire another one and keep keep unfriending people forever. You are a monster. Well, you know, it's they're not performing well, and I don't. I can't think of anything better. You know. Um. I, I don't. I, I'm. You know. I'm not doing. I don't know. You know. Maybe positive words of encouragement would help, That's, Sean. That is not a spell. <laughs> it is not one of the spells available to us. Now is the time. So oh, wow, that spell. The English Seth says to hire a math teacher. Oh, uh, didn't I do that? Did he not show up? No, it says. Oh, I I clicked on the wrong side. I'm a dummy. Oh uh, wow. So that that spell that you just cast with all the green matrix numbers, it looks like vomit. It looks real. I actually really like it. And then if you look, at it looks really cool. If you look at it carefully, I just noticed this for the first time. It actually says things. Um, oh. Like it said, now is the time, and I assume the rest is of our discontent. I think it's like Shakespeare. Now is the time of things. So now is the time of where's Seth? Aren't you going to get Seth on? Come on, get with it. Yeah, he. Ha we have four minutes. I'll bring him in a little bit early. Get with it, Seth. If you are ready, I'm going to bring you in right now. Ooh. Let's see if I can get this. I'm doing very bad at this. Seth is going to come on and say, Oh man, you were so terrible at this game. He will not be wrong. Forget the pineapple ray. I think he's right. I think we're going to use unfriender. Um, I'm going to fire this lady too. Did, did we lose the call? Did something bad happen? Oh, call is on hold. Hmm. Why is the call on hold, Tim? This is very awkward for me. Very, very awkward for me. So what we're doing is we're doing we're taking in uh, Seth's advice right now, and I'm trying to fire the teachers. And I think I didn't. I forgot to hire one back. Okay, so let's get a teacher in, and then we can make people not friends anymore. And if they're not friends, they can't be bad at school because since they have no friends, the only focus in their life is getting good grades and that approval of their parents. That's how uh, how good teaching happens. Oh, Sean, I'm trying to figure out how to to add add uh, Seth to the call. It worked really easily beforehand, and I'm trying to figure that out now. Uh, let me see here. Hold on, hold on. I got this. I got this. I got this. You sure? Because I I yep. can do it. All right. No, I got it. There we go. Oh, there we go. Looks like he's coming oh. on now. Oh, I... Did you mess it up again? I me I totally messed this up. Okay, let's... Uh, how many students left do we have? I still don't have enough XP to buy back the get rid of the friends spell. That's the thing, is we need to get rid of friends. No friends allowed. Of course. Yes. Be lonely and sad, little child. Oh, you are the worst, Sean. What? You are just the worst. That's all I'm going to say is you're the worst. I think that's the best way to just describe anything that goes wrong. You know, it doesn't, seem, it doesn't seem to be working. She still has a lot of spells. Or, I mean, a, little a lot of friends. Why do you guys have so many friends? Yo, they should not have that many friends. They should they not have that many. I didn't have that many friends when I was a kid. I didn't have any. Well, I mean, I had a few. Wait, how many teachers do I do? I have two men teachers now. There's not very much diversity of this class anymore. Well, that's your own fault. This is part of you being the worst. And I'm not not having diverse teachers. Let's let's. I'm so mad at them. I'm just going to reduce their grades, their their pay. Wow. Sean, what I need to, I need profits. You, wow, you are just a monster. I need profit. It's not my. It's, it's look, man. It's the way the game is played. Okay, you can't blame yep. me. I'm just the principal. Hey, Seth. Well, hey. everybody, we have Seth Alter from Subaltern Games, who created No Pineapple Left Behind, on the phone with us. Seth, hello. Uh, Seth, hey, how you doing? Did you intentionally create a game to make me a bad person? Because I think that's the only way to win. 
Uh, yes. Okay, just making sure <laughs> that my turning evil was an intentional, not a side effect. You know that that it's that I'm being led to evil, and I'm not just a bad person deep down. That's that's one of those things that's called a feature, not a bug. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. So, so Seth, how bad is Sean at this video game? So bad. Uh, you're pretty bad. I mean, in <laughs> fairness, you're like you're talking to a lot of people, and and you know, like talking about other things, and like you know, it's a management team that it's like I get that, but like you're also pretty bad at the game. I'm pretty bad at it. <laughs> but like we said, like I I haven't played a a, a management game with any attention i think since um and i think this qualifies as the right kind of game since uh theme hospital was new yeah uh one of the problems with the the first version you were playing was that like you can actually put it on autopilot and it will, it will win the first level on its own oh man i thought i was doing good it was just um, it was just pitying me <laughs> well i mean you have you do you have to set it up but once it's set up it will play itself uh, uh. it's just uh yeah, this one is this this one's a lot more challenging. I'm just I'm just very very bad at it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that that ping you guys just heard was my 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 uh I'm going to turn those notifications off. Was my TV, not my TV, my computer notifying me that Tim did just tweet out that the creator of this game told me I was the worst at it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it has it had to happen. It you know, I happen. I'm I it's a proud landmark in my life. I've never before had the creator of something tell me I'm terrible at it. So that's great. I it's I've I don't take offense. It's you're just telling it like it is, man. We do appreciate no, no, no. I mean like you're clearly having a great time with it and I think it's amazing that you're playing it, but like you're not actually that good at playing it. No, right I'm now. not. It's it's uh <laughs> it's especially fun to have this is the real moment. Oh man, I don't now, know. Now now Seth, we talked earlier this year about this game and can you if for the people that haven't read the feature piece, which I will link right now, can you tell me about what what caused you to make this game? What led to the point where you said, I need to make a game espousing just how terrible the No Child Left Behind Act is for teachers and for students? Oh, well, I used to be a teacher. Um, and uh, it was really bad. It was really rough. Uh, it was out of charter program. Um, and and I quit over, over how they were treating the kids. And... Uh, part of that decision i was you know talking to one of my close friends about it and i was saying that like you know everyone here wants me to treat my kids like statistics and as long as i do that everything's fine but when i decide not to do that all of a sudden i have a lack of resources um and then i was thinking like well actually video games are really good at treating people like statistics right yeah and that's sort of where the idea started now, now you were a now. What makes the difference between a charter school and a public school in terms of how the No Child Left Behind Act works? Um, it 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 works. It it affects it in a, a sort of ancillary way. Um, the a public school is public. They're both publicly funded, but a charter school has its own curriculum, um, and its own set of rules. So it doesn't have to follow the uh, the rest of, like the the municipal rules. Uh, what that means basically is that a charter school is a non-unionized school. Okay. Um, and it's it's a clever little way for uh, corporations to make more money off the tests and to underpay teachers. Um, so it's 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 envisioned as a money saving thing, and in principle, in in practice, is a way for people to make more money. Okay. Um, right. It's, it's my understanding. Not very good. My understanding is the idea behind a charter school is to try out new methods of teaching, but. The people I know who have worked at charter schools have said usually that amounts to you know being under resourced and everything being terrible. Right, you can try out new ways because there's no union. The teachers don't have collective bargaining power. So, like in my game, the fact that you can fire on a whim is sort of a result of that. That would never happen in a public school. Right, and my teachers who work at normal public schools explained to me that they don't necessarily like the union, but it's necessary to have that sort of the sort of system where they can do their job right right you know and it, like right. i've i have my my friend uh is he's the drama teacher at the, at the largest high school in the area and he says he hates the union but he loves the union it's a very strange relationship you know he says right. he, so you could, he says he knows he couldn't do his job without it you could sort of think of of what of charter schools and and the no child left behind act is sort of a one-two punch mm -hmm. that the no child left behind act puts 
t uh, schools in a position where they're strapped for cash, and that makes it easy for corporations to swoop in and uh, profit off of the situation, which is the charter part. Right. And speaking of corporations, isn't that kind of how the, the pineapple euphemism comes into play? Because there's a, a standardized test score or a t standardized test question about pineapples, correct? Yeah, that was on the New York State Regents in uh, 2012, and it's sort of notorious in the uh, education world. Yeah, and uh, John Oliver actually did a piece on it on last week's night. Can you can you explain a little bit about that about how that about that specific question? Because it sounds ridiculous based on the things that I have I've oh, seen and read about. Well, you can if you were to Google the hair, not like 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 the, like a rabbit, you know, like the hair and yeah. the pineapple. Um, you'll get the actual test questions as the first link. Okay, I'm uh, going so to do can, that right now. Uh, and it's it's bizarre um it's it's a little short story followed by multiple choice questions and the story doesn't make any sense and like you can't answer the multiple choice questions it's like how do the pineapple feel at the end of the race like a envious b surprise like i don't know you know yeah it, um, was, it was about a, a foot race correct and right wasn't the the actual answer is the pineapple didn't ha ha didn't have tricks up its sleeve or something because it doesn't right. It's right that the pineapple couldn't win the fit race because it's a pineapple. It doesn't move, so they ate the the animals eat the pineapple, and that's the end of the story. God, that's uh, but, dark. But then the questions like are not answerable, and, and like they're statistic like it's it, they're demonstrably not answerable because there was an even spread of answers across like like an evil even range of A through A uh, on many of the answers. Like oh man, kids had no idea. Just this just sounds like an absolute mess. I remember and reading it, and it just it, it reads like something that like like a humor authorist would write in like a fever dream, you know. It is, in fact, it's the guy who wrote the original story Shrek. Oh, oh my god! <laughs> wow, wow. Not only that, but the story. This is not on the John Oliver uh, skit, but um, what what really blew the story up though was when they found out that the this um, short story was on multiple tests that it kept getting recycled, and this was the latest incarnation. Oh, so, I mean, like, you know, accidents happen, right? People screw up and put on the wrong short story, and, like, they didn't think it through, but the fact that this was regurgitated so many times over was a really bad sign. Oh, boy. Wow. So, yeah, I'm looking at this right now. So, uh, so the, the final paragraph of the story is, about a few hours later, the hare came into sight. It flew right across the finish line, still as fast when it first took off. The hare had won, but the pineapple still sat at his starting point and had not even budged. The animals ate the pineapple. <laughs> and here are the two questions. Why did the animals eat the pineapple? A, they were annoyed. B, they were amused. C, they were hungry. D, they wanted to. Question number two. Who was the wisest? The hare, moose, crow, or owl? This makes no sense. I like how the, all, like, all, all of them work for the first question. Basically, yeah, right, because yeah. Like, they probably wanted to, like, they weren't coerced into eating the pineapple, right? Um, they were probably hungry or they wouldn't have eaten, right? You know, they oh, were probably wow. annoyed like, because it didn't make any sense. That's yeah, right. So, um, it's 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 sort of like like a somewhere between an inside joke and just like a thing that. Like if if you were to go to someone who who works with like education policy and mention this, like they 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 have heard of this before. This is like, you know, an ongoing like infamous anecdote. Yeah. So, uh, if how far along are you on the game? I know you gave us a a very recent build, but how long until release on this? And what is coming beyond what's in the build that we're playing? Well, so you didn't get to uh, so the second level was in the game for the for about a month now, and the uh, the level the game you have actually has the third level. Okay. Um, which is uh, introduces uh, spell supplies, which you can there you can uh, buff supplies. Uh, you can buff spells rather with uh, school supplies. They cost money, but they give spells additional effects. Okay. Um. The, the fourth, there's going to be nine levels total. The fourth level is actually about half done already. Probably mm -hmm. more than that. It's very close to being done. Um, each level is going to be adding on new features until probably the last few. Uh, maybe the last two levels have them all in place. But um, I'm projecting a winter release. Okay. Uh, and I've been sort of working on doing a uh, one level per month. Okay. Uh, which, if you do the math, doesn't work out. So I'm going to have to double down at some point. <laughs> but... <laughs> 
Uh, Bull Tipper in chat asks, do you mind explaining the game? So is there is there a way to give a quick elevator pitch on this? So for people that might just be tuning in or are trying sure. to figure out what's going on with it? Sure. Um, so in, it's a school simulator and you have to dehumanize kids to make money. <laughs> uh, Sorry, that's a pretty good description. <laughs> children um, are, are pretty expensive and very complicated, uh, but they could turn into pineapples, which are much cheaper and uh, much simpler. Okay. And I'm seeing, Sean, you're actually doing really well. You have $40,000 in your bank account, and from what I can tell, and you are $104 ahead, and you need to make or $896 more, and then you reach the goal, correct? Yeah, that's, oh, good. That's, that's, as, that's as good as I've done so far, legitimately. That's pretty good. Yeah, and I'm the, the hardest thing I've found, actually, is I'm trying to do what you suggested, which is to, uh, to ruin these children's relationships. But the hardest part is keeping track of where the kid with the friendships is. You know, I need to right. keep track of them and then make sure I target them, but they're always moving too fast. Yeah. Now, do the pineapples move slower than children? No. No? But you okay. don't need to target pineapples. Well, they don't do anything. No. True. Yeah. Um, I generally pause the game to do that, but uh, oh, you can, if you, you were can, to ask it, can you if you were to ask it, it turns out keeping track of a gaggle of kids is actually harder in real life, too. Oh, yeah, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> now, you were a special ed math teacher in a previous life, correct, Seth? Yeah, for about, not not too long, but yeah, that's that's what I was doing for sixth graders. Okay, and and you quit because your students were ex being expected to perform at the same rate as 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 non special needs kids, right? Um, that was that was definitely the catalyst because not only that, but they were on the same behavioral plan, which upset me also. Okay, and and how how has the No Child La Left Behind Act kind of progressed or or turned? since since you have left have you witnessed it getting better or getting worse or or what has been your reaction to it so far or since you've gotten out of the education and uh well the no child know. left behind act is sort of you know a static piece of legislation okay um, that could be overturned or not but uh there's 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 definitely an ongoing push to have more charter schools which is the second piece of the uh puzzle so programs like i was in like are, are getting increasingly popular okay um, now, is that something that's really happening more on the coast? Because here where I am, I'm in Michigan, and there are a few charter schools, but it's not nearly as widespread, especially where, where I am in Grand certainly, Rapids. Certainly not. You could look. There was a huge teacher strike uh, in Chicago, I think, two years ago. One, one or two years ago, you could look up. Okay. Uh, yeah. No, this is a very – this is a national issue. Okay. Big, big issue. It's. I would guess it's more of an urban issue. Okay. But I don't, I don't necessarily know that. Okay. And when would when is it going to be possible for the for the no, no child left behind act to possibly be overturned or written out of law? Oh, I don't know. I don't I don't actually know how that works. Okay. Um, I suspect that if it becomes possible, it will not be. Okay. Um, there's way too much money keeping it around. Okay. Well, that's the unfortunate truth of a lot of po political things. Is uh, is the motivations behind them? Um, always change. I've seen a lot of laws, and let's not get specific because we're not really a political show, but I've seen a lot of just laws that were presented as good ideas that changed for various reasons by the end of it through various bargaining. It was no longer sure. what it was I originally mean, intended to be. Like, there are companies that make the standardized tests that have a vested interest in having more standardized tests right. because it's not the test they make money off of. It's the textbooks that are designed to cater to the test is right. where they make their money. So, like, there's, there's a lot of money in in this whole problem that's really what it comes down to okay. uh, which is you know what the game tries to emphasize it's just it's just not about bettering futures anymore um right like i'm managing i'm not i'm not working i don't care i want the children's to be worthless pineapples to win the game because the bottom line is what matters not the quality of their education or future and right. like i think so that comes I, across really clearly if you think about it for more than five seconds Right, right now you have a C plus and you're actually making money you're toward your goal, which is because you were going through and you were making the children not have any friends. Yeah, slowly, right. and it's and and like you said, it is now the most efficient thing for me because I've worn a teacher out by making her work too hard. That it makes more sense for me instead of giving her a rest or doing something to improve her situation, I just fired her and brought in someone fresh, which I've seen happen at charter schools. Yep. 
You know, like my my friend, uh, two of my friends that work at a local charter school both just left the same school the same year without any future prospects because they were just too burned out, and that's that's what happened. And now and they're much happier um, at their new at their new schools. You know, which it didn't take them long to find. So you should you should have them play this game, Sean. Oh, I don't think they would tolerate it. Or maybe they would be <laughs> they, opening up old wounds. They are very much not gaming people. <laughs> Oh, okay. They, now, I was that's not, I, I didn't mean to say it that way, Seth. I just mean like like I can't get them to play anything with me. Right. <laughs> we go to Disneyland together and that's the extent of our friendship. Now, Seth, what is your what has the reaction been like from from both the indie game scene cuz you there's a pretty robust indie game scene in Boston, but also from your friends that are possibly still working in education. How is that going and how have they reacted so far? Well, I know, I mean, with the indie scene, I know a lot of developers, so, uh, you know, a lot of the feedback is, is pretty technical, just like things that could be improved and all that. Um, you know, it definitely sticks out as a management simulator. There's not many indie management simulators. Okay. Um, as far as teachers go, uh, I haven't met a teacher that doesn't like it. Um, they all really, really like it, which is a good sign. Okay. Now, are, are they playing it themselves? Um... Not not always. Now, many of them are going to be watching streams like this. Okay. Um, for example, but so you know, which would in in a very calculated way of putting it, they're not really my target audience because many of them won't play it. But right, um, like it's it. I think it's it's very important that teachers do support this at least morally. <laughs> right. Oh yeah, definitely. And when the initial interview that i did with you when it ran i have a cup i have a, a good friend of mine his wife is a teacher and i showed this also to a former english professor i had and they both wholeheartedly agreed with everything that you were saying that it is <laughs> madness what's happening right now that this is the type of this is the way that they're expected to teach and it's it's crazy right and and like i alluded to this is this is sort of a a nicer version of what's actually going on like, and it's funny that this in, is nicer in, because it seems so brutal. Yeah, I guess no, you're not. Things I took, you're not getting the actual emotions in it, though. Sorry, go like, on. Like, there's a there's a school that's that's in the area that I read about that that um, teachers will have uh, walkie like headsets on and there'll be and, and a camera and someone will be telling them live like what we're doing right now, what they should be doing in class. What? Oh yeah, that happened. It's a real thing. That happened at my friend's charter school. Something very much like that. So it's yeah, basically yeah. like a TV set, and they have a producer in their ear telling them what to do. Right, right. So like, if they're like praise, like they they like would praise a kid for like the good work, but like someone will wire into the ear that like that wasn't part of the curriculum. You can't do that. Oh my god. Right. The, the rules. So that's not have... in my game. Like no one would believe me if I put that in my game. So I didn't. Yeah. The rules um, they have to follow are extremely strict. I, they, I, they, they were telling me about this problem recently about they can't use certain hand gestures or they have to use certain hand gestures. Right. This, this is all so foreign to me. This doesn't make any sense. Right. And which it, is why it's that's why that's not in the game because like that's. It, 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 like people would think it was like a science fiction. Like this is where schools are going. Oh uh, man, which is not true. That's actually what's going on now. That's what you know what happened in a few days when they get back to school. So, so to go uh, into a diff slightly different direction with this, and to go into a lighter tone, how did you come up with the names for the students and the teachers? Oh, they're randomly generated. Okay. Um, what kind they, of parameters did you set in place? Because they sound like Game of Thrones names. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, they're, they're, there's there's a couple constraints, and I forget actually exactly how it works, okay. but. Um, it just takes the, I think it takes the first half of a name and the second half of a random name and puts them together. That's, uh, it's like, that's all there is to it. Oh, okay. That explains some of the really unique ones we've seen. Like, some of them sound like they could be names I'd come across, especially with some of the silly names you get these days. But um, other ones are really tough, you know? Like, Emity. Emity yeah. sounds like a name that might be kind of a new age name. I could believe that. There's, a, there, there's like a couple grammatical rules. Like, you can't have a certain amount of consonants all next to each other. So, and if you just have a few rules like that, it ends up becoming, like, pronounceable most of the time. Most of the time. Okay. And that's fine. They sound like they, they have such strong personalities in game that... <laughs> like, Clarinda. Clarinda, you know, I can pronounce that. It's it, it's a pretty right, unique Right, sure. Name. Like, they, 
because they're all real names just smashed together, they all look real-ish. Yeah, <laughs> most of them are fairly similar to something I've seen before. And a couple of them, like, I, like would make great, like, again, like, fantasy games. Yeah, we originally put it in as a way of just... As, as, as a stopgap measure, because we wanted to be able to, no. to tell the in-game entities apart from each other when we were debugging. And then I was just like, you know, we should probably just keep it. It's pretty funny. Um... Oh, no. Oh, no. No pineapple. Oh. No pineapple left behind to stop responding, but I have $637 out of 1,000 and still left days to oh, go. I'm so oh. sorry. I'm so oh. close. It's, it's, oh. Can I get it back? Sometimes if I wiggle the window, it comes back. <laughs> So do you have a logging uh, system so uh, so users could potentially send these to you so you could maybe chase down whatever this is? We have a is? logging system. You have you. I believe you have the log. I, I set it up and it should have triggered. Um, so you you have information that I lack. I don't know what's causing that bug. If if, if it's uh, if it's logging this somewhere, please email us after the show and I'll send the file to you. Um, yeah, um, it it's it's remarkable like it's been a thing for a month and i have not found it yet this has been the worst of them all um <laughs> and unfortunately it's, like, it's on display like, it's 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 gonna be one line of code that i slipped up on but i can't find it and that's how um, it goes let's, let's try oh, i'm gonna lower the graphics quality and see if that makes a difference it won't but oh it, it won't it uh, won't it's, well too it's, late <laughs> it's, oh. it's not a, it's not freezing on you it's actually a frame rate drop that was what it's just like the frame rate s slows to like you know, a, a tenth of a frame per second or something. To such an extent oh. that it crashes it. Okay. Right. Like, it just chugs down and then crashes. It's not, it's not a freeze. So this, um, is, this is kind really of... really weird. Oh, boy, that got really sensitive. I, what did I do wrong? Um, but this is an alpha, so, I mean, we're not expecting a full sure. final product. I so. do have a question, though, uh, about, about the yeah. alpha. Is um, I noticed there is um, joystick control support. Was that intentional, or is that just part of Unity? <laughs> I would like to say it's intentional. <laughs> because cause it only works for just moving the camera, and that's what I've been doing this whole time because my keyboard is horrendously loud. I've been using uh, a 360 controller in my left hand and a mouse in the right. Oh, okay. Weird. <laughs> yeah. So, Dual wielding Sean. So there you go. Yeah, that's not intentional. That's pretty cool. I'm glad I could educate it. <laughs> yeah, yep. I wouldn't have thought of that. Now, I do have to ask, because we have a regular in chat. His name is Yaddle. If you were to port this to the PlayStation 4, <laughs> what would the light bar support be like? <laughs> what support? The light bar. The PlayStation 4 has a light bar on the front of it for the controller. And it, sometimes it changes colors based on the actions you're doing in the game. So maybe if when you were casting a spell, would it change colors or how, you know? Oh, I, I mean, not... I... I I you know I don't know anything about the PS4 to be honest. I don't know when I'll develop for one, but um, it, the way you're describing it, maybe it would uh, change colors depending on your overall average, which okay. would actually be pretty useful. Um, uh, that that's maybe I don't know. I'm not. I can't really picture what this thing looks like. No, that's okay. That's all right. It's just it's something that we. I mean, we've asked many people about light bar support because it's, it's something that constantly comes up in chat it's we asked, become a running joke yeah we asked oh, I we, we asked playstation's head of worldwide studios shuhei yoshida what his favorite instance of light bar support was when we <laughs> interviewed him at e3 and it's just it's just a thing you know we 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 try and ask it every interview so all right well in that case i, I would say that plus uh whenever it's about to freeze it would turn red <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> well, I mean, I like you'll you'll iron that out eventually. Like I said, it's an alpha build, but it's uh yeah. But if but if but if I had the light bar support, then I could call it a feature and move on with my life. <laughs> <laughs> now, how long have you been developing games, sir? Um, well, so I was working on games as a side project. Uh, I mean, I how long have I been developing games like full time or or, in or or just in general as a hobbyist and as full time. I mean, so I, I made my first, like, full thing in my senior year of college, and then I started working on my first standalone when I was uh, just out of college for work, and then I quit uh, my uh, teaching job in uh, October 2012. Okay. And so you've been developing full-time since October 2012? Yeah. Okay. And this isn't your first game either, is it? You did. I, no. I think that when we talked earlier, you said that you had a Kickstarter for another game. Yeah, for Neo Colonialism, which was the first game. Okay, and what was the premise of that? Um, it 
you it looks kind of like risk um you play as a banker and you're trying to extract as much wealth from the world as possible so your games have a history of having social messages yes okay um this is in my mind sort of like a microcosm of neocolonialism okay and I think when we also when we spoke earlier, you talked about how you you kind of drew some inspiration from Prison Architect, right? And yes, okay. And now, what's were there any specific elements that you took from Prison Architect that you wanted to implement within No Pineapple Left Behind? Um, honestly, it's, it's they would be primarily mechanical. Um, I, I I get the kind of the heebie-jeebies with uh, Prison Architects and and how it's it's uh, toned kind of uh, moves all over the place. That's something I really don't like about it. Okay. Um, you know, that is sort of humorous in the tutorial, and then the tutorial concludes with you, like, wiring up an electric chair. I'm like, ah, I think I'm done. Whoa. Like, yeah. Like, like, it doesn't have, I don't know, it, it's very consistent in tone. Okay. Um, but mechanically, it's a management simulator, um, and there's very few out these days, so that's, that's why I generally say Prison Architect is the closest. Okay. Um, I think in many ways, like, something like Dwarf Fortress is closer, the way I, I'm modeling the, uh, the children, for example. Okay. Um, I guess that's my short answer. <laughs> okay. Let's see. When you, um, I was sort of curious. So you were a teacher, and then, what, like, what did you when you first started developing games? Did you just teach it yourself, or it's, has it been something you've been doing for a long time, or is it just something you did to try and unwind from all the teaching stress? Like, how did that come about? How oh, did you How did you well, first I get had, into it? I had started working on neocolonialism. Um, while I was looking for work for the teaching job, so mm. that, it predates it by a bit. Um, I don't know. Uh, I I had a couple take, took a couple classes in programming, but I figured I'd give it a whirl. So that's how I learned to program, for the most part. Um, yeah, I don't know. I I don't have any formal background in in anything that I'm doing uh, as a profession, but it seems to have worked out. I gotta say, man, that this tactic you gave me, it's working a little better, but there's something sadly satisfying about being able to click on so many of these uh, these children and, and be glad to see that their personal trait is no friends. Yep. <laughs> yep. It's very weird. And the buses, they never arrive on time, correct, Seth? Like, because... The buses do arrive on time, but the level after this, they will be late. Always, correct? Always, because oh. there's a there's a hyperspace inhibitor field. What? Uh, <laughs> have either of you played Homeworld? No. Okay, no. so the bus the bus effect is 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 riffing on Homeworld. It's okay. the hyperspace effect from Homeworld. I was wondering what that was. Um, it was very interesting. Yeah. Well, they travel. I mean, like they can't drive to the schools, right? Because they're floating on ice cubes. So, <laughs> See, I told you they were they floating are, on something. I don't know what they're floating on. Um. A rock or an ice. I think it's an ice cube. I'm not sure. Um, the 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 hyperspace thing is actually uh, so. What happens when the bus drives off, right? Like, because the map goes off in infinite directions, right? Do we just like turn off the graphic at some point? Um, you know, do we fade it out into a fog? So I said, what if it just like hyperspace is in, like, you know, via dimensional gate, and then we don't have to think about what happens when it exits. So, sure. Yeah. That's that's the genesis behind that idea. That's true. In the next level, um, the bus drivers union creates a hyperspace inhibitor field, um, so all the buses are going to be late in that level. But it's tricky because kids that are late to class automatically fail. Uh, oh. So that makes it rough. Right. So a big part of that strategy is that you play the televisor, just like the movie projector spell. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you just play that at the start of every day because it's going to be a wash anyway, and you can serve energy that way. Uh, oh my gosh! So that's why that <laughs> was there. It's true, and that's a true thing that happens in schools. Oh yeah, I know. Like that was always the thing is kids would all on in service days when they had to do when they had to count attendance because it was based on the school funding was based on attendance. We would just watch movies all day. Sure, whatever. Yeah. Oh man, the, um, that yeah, makes more the, sense. Uh, I was wondering what the point of having the lower end power was, because like if I can upgrade to another one and I'm still going to get a hundred percent chance of doing it, why not use the higher one? And that's why. <laughs> right, right, because you only have two classes now, and and when the game expands, because like the third level has five classes, and mm. by the time you get to the end of block E, 
uh, the teachers are very tired. Like, you can't actually fire off the best spell every single time. Wow. Okay, we have two super dorks in chat. He says, or he or she, says that they really want to play this now. Very cool. So, hey, I mean, they will be able to do so in the winter, correct, Seth? Right. So, yeah, I'm going to, I'm, I'm, I'm aiming for, like, a January release. Um, right now you can play it because, like, there is a free alpha. Um, okay. It's obviously got all, I mean, the, the version you're playing is not out just yet. I okay. Want, I want to clear up a few, like, that, that freezing bug I wanted. Yeah, 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 go for it. You know what I'm saying? But but uh, that'll be out in a little bit. You can go play it right now, though, what, what is available. Okay. Yeah, the other now, version actually was running better for me. Yeah, now, Seth, can you send me a link in the tw in the Skype chat, and then I'll drop the, the link for the previous version into the Twitch chat, and then whoever is interested in playing it can play it. Sure. Here okay. There we go. All right. And uh, two super dorks you're going to play. You're, you can play this evening. You can play right but, now. Uh, that's got, that, really... that version has all sorts of other bugs. Okay. Uh, nothing that will stop the game, but things that will corrupt it. The one, okay. I, the one I noticed <laughs> is the bus was um, visible through the walls in that version. Right. Uh, that's it's a little hard to explain why that one is true. Uh, we, we did a fancy thing to so make the hyperspace effect work. We did a fancy uh, thing that doesn't work when you rotate the camera. We replaced the effect in this version. Okay. Well, it is. We are running slightly over on time. And well, at least Clement Liebitz turned into a pineapple. Well, there we have it. I mean, go. Sean, we have learned so much about each other's pineapple eating habits and how much <laughs> you enjoy loving turning kids into pineapples. I like making kids sad. It makes me... It's, it's, you know, it's, it's, I'm, maybe I should, maybe I'm destined to be a, a charter school teacher. There wow. you go. Wow. Uh, so I want to say thank you, everybody that's tuned in. If you enjoyed today's stream, please click that heart underneath the streaming window. It'll let you know when we go live. We're actually going to be coming back tomorrow for a bonus stream. We're going to be playing some of the games that were released on as part of the PlayStation Plus promo this week. So tomorrow we're going to be playing Grow Home and also Super Time Force Ultra. So, if you want to get a, get a hold of us, you can do so on Twitter. Or, if you just want to know when we're going to stream, hit the follow button underneath and you'll get an email, you get an alert on whatever device you're on, and you will be able to join us next time we start streaming. So, I want to say very, 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 very big thank you to Mr. Seth Alter for providing this alpha build for us and for joining us on the stream today. Oh, hell, thank you. This has been great. No problem. Also, thank you to Sean Buckley, who has been doing an awesome job of turning kids into fruit. I am the best at making schools floating on paranormal ice cubes fail out of anyone on this stream. No one can make them fail better than me. <laughs> and for me, I am Tim Seppola, and thank you once again, everybody, for joining in. We will catch you tomorrow. Good night.